So it's like a little, like to be honest, I didn't think it was going to be this tight, but it's pretty tight. So, are we yeah. live? Yeah. Yeah, just hit the uh, live button. Well, great. You can uh, get a fist in there? You can. You can get a fist in there. It's pretty, uh, you know, you don't even really have to work your way up to it. You don't see these during Star Wars movies. Phantom Plenty Menace movies. Phantom Menace uh, re-released, 25th anniversary. They need like a Jar Jar Binks one of these. I don't know what body part they'll use, but... Maybe his mouth? Maybe his mouth with a big, with a big massive tongue that comes out. I think you could do something like that. You could have gone with the Sarlacc, but instead you went with Jar Jar. I, I could have. But yeah, the Sarlacc is like Star Wars' Dune, whatever the thing is. Sandworm. Right. Molly, you haven't seen Dune yet, have you? I saw no. the first one. I didn't see the second. Uh, oh, fucking who cares had, about Dune? Bad Batch. How did you out, see bros? it? No, hold on. How did you see Dune 2? I got a special invite from Warner Brothers. Uh, we're, we're really closely connected. Mm -hmm. They really like my channel. So you're They're big fans. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's literally a fan first event that anybody could buy. Uh, it was a special, oh, special screening Sunday night IMAX at like 400 theaters nationwide. So oh, sick. I snagged a ticket and <laughs> I, I thought it was awesome. It was good. Um, I thought it was really good. If you like the first one, I think you're really going to like it. If you're a super hardcore fan of the book, there's going there are things that are left out or changed a little bit or things like that. I'm kind of in the middle. Like I've read Dune once or twice in my life. I like it, but I'm, I'm not like a lore expert on it or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and I could tell some of the things that were changed. But overall, as a cinematic experience, probably the best I've had in like several years. It's really? really good. Yeah, it, it's you got to go watch on the biggest screen you can. It's amazing. Mm. Cool. Okay, and I'll get one of those popcorn buckets. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna sell out, I think. So it, it's crazy how like something like that becomes a meme, and then it just does so well with sales. They had to know. I'm, there is no way whoever designed this didn't know it. Like looks like a flashlight. Yeah. Like, there, there, there's no way. Yeah. Uh, Denis Villeneuve has, like, a quote out there about, like, somebody asked him about it. He's like, the first time I saw it, I was like, holy smokes, what the fuck is this? Like, that's an exact quote from Denis Villeneuve. <laughs> yeah. So, if that's yeah. how you say his name, Mahler's the expert on European that's, pronunciation. That's what I thought, too, when I entered the stream and I saw your fist in it. But anyways. I think you're pretty on point with that pronunciation. Also, did you see his quote about dialogue? Yeah. And I think that, I, I, I think, I get what he's saying. I don't think he's straight up saying I hate words. <laughs> I think more what he, he's saying that, like, especially when it's like extended exposition and things like that. Uh, Bro, get in the way of like, how much, how much work do you have to do to clean up someone's statements if he just says, I hate dialogue <laughs> and it's like infected from TV and, and theater? It's like, what? Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what's wrong with theater? What's wrong with TV? But it's like, there's so many things about the way that he said it. It's just like, what are you talking about? I'd like to but, see like he said. I don't remember movies for good lines. I remember movies for strong imagery. It's like, what are you talking about? So many famous movie lines in your yeah. own movies. Yeah, I mean, again, I would like to see the like whole thing from him, especially because half the time we get quotes from him, they're in French translated to something else. So I'd like to see the initial one, like the one, know, one specifically references. about uh, about Dune Part Two was mistranslated as to say somebody else is the main character instead of Paul, which was like not the case, not what he actually said and not what the case either. You know There's what I mean? Of him right, saying that he doesn't like exposition or something. As part of the quote, he says he wouldn't mind making a film with absolutely no words in it. Well, uh, depending on how many women are in it, I might agree. <laughs> I would love the experiment of having no dialogue, but the fact that he hates it is fucking crazy. I know all like I know what I have to say now to get theory off stream. Like all I have to do is mention women in some sort of derogatory way, joking way, whatever, and he'll just <laughs> gone. Give me a second. Women, women and bad. And then he's I like, just lean on. into it now, man. Madam Webb would have done better without dialogue. <laughs> yeah, I love dialogue in Madam Webb. What do you mean? <laughs> so good. You Holler's know, we didn't have a lot of dialogue. Was Bad Batch. Fuck, here we go. <laughs> See, Taylor Taylor knows. Taylor associates mm -hmm. you with me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, but he's French, Mola. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's French. You got to have context. All right. 
So the Bad Batch season three, you guys loved it. Mahler's favorite. How do we? How do we do it? Should we do like uh, everyone choose a number overall for the three episodes and slap it all down at the same time so that none of us can influence each other before we get that those numbers? Yeah, right. Give, give me a second. Uh, so like overall, one out of ten yeah. for the first story three episodes, episodes one, two, and three together out of ten. What'd you give it? I don't want to influence. Mm -hmm. I'm going first. Are we all going to go well, at the same time? All, well, all, the, same all time. the same time. So on the count of five, one, two. <laughs> count of five? <laughs> I'm still thinking. Right. Four, five, four and a half. Three. 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 All right. All right. We're pretty close. We're pretty damn close. <laughs> yeah, not too far off. I, I really want to know what Mahler thought about his entire experience because this is the first time you've seen any type of Clone Wars oh. animated style show. Let me tell and you, was, let me tell you, fellas, it was wacky. The, Watching that previously was on was character. hilarious. It was it was just like a bunch of nonsense to me. <laughs> like it was like just don't let it derail you from the actual Clone Wars. No, of course. Yeah. No, listen, this show that I'm running with you fuckers is going to get me through that whole thing, probably. Yeah. And I'll I'll do yeah, it, right? It's part of well, my tales that you still got to tell the Jedi. Exactly, exactly. And Bad Batch, I know what a Bad Batch isn't. Clone Wars isn't. Rebels isn't. Tales isn't. You know, they're all, they're, they're, they live in their own little world. But yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, the previously on, I actually watched the previously on before and after the three episodes, and it didn't make any more sense after that or before that. But, um, Still, I followed the story of these three episodes, and uh, oh boy. Well, I can tell you the story of one was it, it, it only needed to be about five minutes long. It would have been like, hey, Omega's been here a long time, uh, and it's the same thing every fucking day. I'm and surprised I'm tired of that dripping faucet. Why have minutes. a previously on Bad Batch as a series without just doing a quick, like, this is this guy this is this like as in like character names right because like the previously on basically covered very specific information and i was like it showed tech dying quote unquote and i was like okay i remember you guys talking about that but everything else pretty much was just a blur i was like well, he, what was if we season ever three? followed orders we're in season well, three now no i know but like if you're gonna have a previously which i don't think helped that much at all um you know, I think the point of previously is not for people who have literally never watched it ever before. I believe the point of previously is for people that watched it last year and just want to be reminded of the bullet points to like bring back. Fair numbers. enough. But what am I to do? All right. You guys put me on this path. OK, you, you got to go watch season two's first episode so that you get a previously of season one. <laughs> That's true, actually. That's what you should have done. Yeah, you should have done that. There you go. Or just watch my breakdown videos. There you go. Thanks for the view like and subscribe um but yeah no i you know the first two i was like okay she's here it's pretty dark very dark style of star wars since we haven't really gotten too much of that and uh pretty melancholy and then the third one i was like oh shit palpatine's in okay this is cool but then it's like <laughs> he he goes to the freaking thing and it's 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 literally the same chamber as exegol and i'm like Dr. Really? Hemlock, I see Project Necromancer is proceeding exactly as planned. Yes, Emperor, everything is happening as you have foreseen, or whatever. Oh, shit, like, that's a good Hemlock. I don't know. I just got that was my one shot. Were you the so, one recording? Yeah, it was me actually. Oh, it was okay, me. Okay. Me and Dave actually have a really long relationship. So, yeah. hey Ryan, it's nice to see you. Can you maybe? Harry has a dark. fetish for getting ass fucked, so he, he likes listening to me rip into him. Leave. The actor is uh, Jesse Simpson, who uh, has popped up in a couple of things. He's in Westworld for that character, Hemlock, I think. For Hemlock, yeah. isn't it Jimmy? Uh... Well, Jimmy Simpson. Sorry, not yeah, Jesse. yeah, Jimmy Simpson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know Jimmy Simpson best for his work on. Uh... Um, God, what is it? I know Jimmy Simpson best for his work on. Uh, God, Phil uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Ah. Um, have you seen that, Mahler? Uh, I've seen some of it, not all of it. Oh my god, his character's great in that. What about you, Theory? Always Sunny? No, I've never seen that. All right. Never okay. mind then. Anyways, yeah, so the it's just like, it, so. it's just like X school. Yeah, no, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like X school. And then we get to the point where he's looking through the thing and everyone's like, holy shit, that's Snoke. I thought it was Snoke too, but wouldn't it be cool if it was just like a young him? 
and then Snoke is just some like completely fucked up version of what they had to do with a plan B. Right? So cuz there were in the comics Luke ends up beating the shit out of Snoke and that's why he's got all these scars and disfigurements. I don't know if Dave's going to go along with that. But what I would like to happen if they're going along <laughs> Stop Stop saying that. I don't know if Dave's going to go along with that. <laughs> well, I don't. Like, like, for the past four years, all we've been hearing from people that are, like, trying to cope is, like, well, I'm sure John and Dave aren't going towards the sequels. <laughs> and then literally everything they've yeah. ever done, everything they've ever done, starting in Mando Season 1, on yeah. to 2, on to 3, Bad Batch, right? Uh, Ahsoka, like, all of this stuff is meant to tie completely into the sequels and to explain away the sequels. The last five years of Star Wars storytelling has been an attempt to explain away one decision by J.J. Abrams that was made like uh, the snap of a finger because we're fucked. What do we do for Rise of Skywalker? Well, we got to explain Palpatine now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, would it, wouldn't it be cool if it was not that? And he created some sort of like, this is not Snoke. This is some completely different. Maybe it's like a young him who gets, I don't know, killed don't, or destroyed. Don't you think that's what uh, I think Project Necromancer is? making Snoke. palpatine no it's palpatine it's like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, that's what yeah. i think project necromancer is Same. period yeah so i don't know that'd be cool that would be exactly what i expect he he wants to it, it ensure that he's being able to make these clones and you know, live on forever type of thing yeah so i don't think it's snoke like that's that's all i care about i don't want it to be fucking snoke again oh so what i okay. want to see the story of him making young palpatine and it possibly working and then something happens where, who knows, like the batch gets destroyed or the information or data gets destroyed or the lab gets whatever. Uh, and then Snoke is like some plan B bullshit that they had to create. You would, you'd like that. Well, what else? What other option? Do you, would you rather it be Snoke? I don't care about any of the clone nonsense science plot line. I want fucking character stuff. That's what I'm here for. Oh, well, that's, you're not going to get that in the Bad Batch. I mean, there's there was some there's pieces. I'd even have some levels of praise for the some of the minor things that they did, but mostly criticism. <laughs> I I actually think that it's going to be interesting when Molly goes back and watches all the TCW because specifically, yeah. like the first episode of Bad Batch, there has been in Bad Batch in general, there's been an attempt to be more serious and have like more cinematography almost in yeah. this type of animation than there was in like standalone clone war series like undoubtedly that that's like a big attempt they're pushing for and the first episode it almost felt to me like they were really pushing hard uh with these long pauses between dialogue and long lingering shots on things and i'm like man it feels like this episode could have only been 10 minutes long and they're really like extending it out for sure so it's going to be interesting when mala goes back and watches the first like seasons of tcw and it just like so silly. well for reference i have yeah. seen season one of tcw like I, I saw that a few years ago i think i tried okay. to watch it i Did think i got wow. halfway through like season two and then i gave up but um yeah it, it was it was a very wacky child show right like it's like a 10 minute sequences of funny battles that happen and chill thing you know like it's, it's very chill it's very almost wholesome and Supposed to be ended. Feels like something that you like put on between lessons in school or something. It's just yes. like, look now, welcome yeah. to this fun adventure. You yeah, you yeah, have yeah. you have it on like in the background while you're like folding laundry or making a sandwich or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. Not heavy. Yeah, you know, this that's the best type of content. You know, Bad Batch opening is like it's, it's like rainy and this big landscape shot. And this like all kinds of soundtracks to create the mood that the store the 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 troopers are coming out of like a ship. <laughs> And it's like, what are we gonna do? And it's like the the, the guy is like abandoned them. No one survives outside the perimeter. And it's like, ooh, yeah. Then you hear screaming and he turns off the thing. Like, I, I was like, It's, it's okay. super serious. It's like the Andor of uh like the series is like the Andor <laughs> yeah. of yeah. Star Wars animated series. It, just by that I mean like the serious tone and nature of it. Yeah, um, no, I agree with that. It's definitely much more uh Oh, do you wanna do a I don't know, a spoiler warning just in case for people? No, it was, it was six days ago, and no one's no, watching the no show. No way! <laughs> I'm just saying. Just Dude, I release the... stuff like no, two days after. Warning, Star so Wars the... releases stuff two days after on There's Instagram. There's one guy out there, okay? One guy who's like, "God, I love these three. I wish they wouldn't spoil Bad Patch." That's the one thing I didn't want them to do. So I now think, he knows. 
I think the Acolyte is probably going to get a lot of views. I feel like that show is going to be very mainstream. Very, like, man oh, very, very Mandalorian. Um, well, I... Well, I, yeah, I feel like the views for that will be on par with, like, something like Ahsoka, which is not good in terms of, like, viewership overall. I, I think, think it'll be more. I think the videos are going to do you very well. think Ahsoka? Why? Yeah, I think it'll be... Because it's mainstream. It's like Mando. What do you mean by that? Uh, oh, Mando, but uh, Ahsoka had marginally just a, a little less viewership than Mando season three, which was not good. Um, hmm. So, yeah, season I, I, three. I guess I don't know what you mean. Yeah, season, yeah, but I just what, think what, what about Acolyte feels mainstream other than the fact that it's just really diverse? Because there are no legendary characters in it. It's something completely new. So they're probably going to create it for like a new audience. Not so much like it's not like a Luke Skywalker story, which is going to have like you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. But, yeah, I was just saying, couldn't you the inverse of what you're saying would, then? I would count that against it being mainstream. Yeah. Like, be, be, so right now, the way I see it being advertised, right? We know it's a High Republic story. Yeah. I now see some places going with the phrase, the Phantom Menace prequel. Like to try, well, because they're trying to attach it, right? They're trying to attach it to something people know and care about. Um, why would this, that? This yeah. will actually be a, like a decent example of uh you know if you just put out a trailer that has lightsabers and force users but like nobody that you know or recognize how many people will want to watch that show on the first episode you know yeah i, I think it, it's gonna answer answer an interesting question it would unless of it course would. they put yoda in the trailer which i mean <laughs> i think we all you know of course yoda has got to be there very well might yeah i mean they usually like to clickbait a lot of different characters and you know like darth vader and rogue one or um, <laughs> I was gonna say, there reason for people to share it, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yoda in the Acolyte. Uh, I could see that. Um, I think my main concern with that show is just about Plagueis. That's all. Uh, I hope that at the end of season one, it's a fight between Yoda and Plagueis. Yeah, it, dude. It, it never ever gets mentioned again throughout <laughs> any like form of anything. Um, so that. You know, even though he's like, Sith haven't been seen in a millennia, blah, blah, blah. That's what I'm, I'm hoping for. That just gets ignored for some reason. Can we make the excuses the same way. It's like, you know, my powers have doubled twice since we last met count. <laughs> <laughs> On Geonosis or the 50 fucking times we fought during TCW. I just, what do you I mean? Just, you know what I mean by, by more mainstream? I feel like the diehards aren't necessarily going to be super inclined to watch the show. They might. But I feel like it's going to be more so new Star Wars fans that have just come into the Disney era. Who are they though, and how many mm, are they sequel, like fans? But, but like, you know, we, 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 they didn't show up for like Ahsoka, really, because Ahsoka is more prequel. Eh, I mean, it's like a combination, right? Because Ahsoka set uh, well after the prequels. I don't think they care about that. I think they care about the character. But you're, yeah, you're I, saying that they're selling it on having no character. There's no characters that are being sold this show to, to new fans. That's why I think it's going to apply to a lot of people because a lot of the hardcore guys are going to be like, okay. I'll like, I don't believe people are going to be showing up for Ray and her movie if they were to make it, you know, anywhere near. The thing about it is, right? Like, I don't, I don't know what card they can even pull anymore. They've wasted so many of them. You just have to make a Darth Vader show. Done. Mm. Would. We just had Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, we did. And how'd that go? Terrible. Poorly. It was shit. But yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> but the thing yeah, but is, so here, here's the thing: we need but, proper writing. Okay, but yeah, I'm not saying okay, okay, give me a Darth I, Vader show with shit writing. I'm saying give me a Darth Vader show with like someone actually competent and with well, a I gimbal. I don't know where that's coming from, but like that writing, I don't know where that writing is going to come from. But here's the thing. We just had the return of Hayden as Darth Vader in the Obi-Wan series. Yeah. Which everybody very quickly pretended like they forgot about and then pretended like his return was actually in Ahsoka a year later. Um, and even mm -hmm. with bringing Hayden back, like Anakin Hayden back, even yeah. doing a release in theaters for episode five, right? All of these things, Ahsoka didn't draw anybody. From a ratings perspective. What were the ratings? I remember. They weren't that great. They weren't. They were slightly less than, again, they were slightly less than Mandalorian season three ratings. 
Well, that doesn't say much. Season it doesn't because season three was uh, horrific in terms of ratings for them. It was trash. Mm. Well, not only was it bad, but also didn't get anybody watching. No, it didn't. It was just all over the place. A bunch of bullshit. I can't I believe that, that you know thing. Lizzo didn't draw in a lot of viewers just yeah, with the gravitational crazy. pull. Yeah, wasn't but, wasn't that what John Favreau wanted? Bring Lizzo in there for TikTokers. Those yeah, are the fans uh, that are going to show up for High Republic. Yeah, those are the fans that are really going to buy a lot of Star Wars stuff. That's what I mean, yeah. though. I, I don't see how Acolyte will benefit from new fans. Or I, I don't. I don't think they've done a very good job of assembling a powerful fan base of these new fans, right? And I, I'm not before anybody uh, gets upset in the chat. I'm not shitting on you if you like these things. But what I'm saying is, when you look at say high republic in terms of uh, comic book sales and novel sales and things like that they put a lot into the launch in terms of advertising and things like that yeah. after the the first book or two it, it took a shit it fell off a cliff there's nobody that is buying that stuff mm -hmm. um that doesn't mean that just because no one's buying high republic uh, and keeping up with the books and the comics that doesn't mean that you know nobody watch a tv show about it but yeah. i'm just saying that it doesn't seem like there's a super big, like active fan base for that. So they might be loud on Twitter. Mm -hmm. They might get a lot of likes what? because they got pronouns in their bios and flags and stuff. But I, but in terms of actually moving the needle on something, I don't know if we've seen that from that group that you're talking about yet. Yeah, I just feel like it's a show that will. Um... I think like Ahsoka brings in the hardcore fans, like you know. Uh prequel trilogy and clone wars i don't think it spoke to as many uh mandalorian fans like weekend warrior star wars fans weekend warrior mm. yeah but like what what does do you think i think shows that uh it's difficult because it's like you, you're now not really making star wars anymore you're trying to make star wars for uh the masses right you're trying to make star wars for for People who don't really necessarily never liked Star Wars to begin with, but now you're trying to create something that will cater to them. Like the, the first six films, it was different back in the day, right? It was like, you know, you kind of didn't really talk about it too much in public. You talk about it in your friends group or online or in comic book stores, but it wasn't as mainstream as Star Wars is today, which is great in a sense that everyone loves it. But in the same sense, do they love it as much as the old crew did? I don't think that level of love is as much as it was. I think it's broader. I think what essentially what happened, I think, is literally the transition of the Republic into the Empire. So we had clones who were extremely well trained. We didn't have nearly as many of them as stormtroopers. But once the stormtroopers came in, they can't shoot for shit. They, you know, they're like kind of star somewhat fans. They like this and that a little bit. But there's a trillion of them. Does that make sense though? And Star Wars is at its like lowest success rate ever in terms of engagement. I, yeah, because I think, people don't care as much. So I think that when you go back and look, Star Wars, the it's first diluted. one was one of the was one of the the first Star Wars was one of the biggest movies we've seen all time, right? Mm -hmm. It was massive. It was a cultural event, a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. Go back and look at Phantom Menace and um you know, regardless of what may have happened or the feeling that some people had about the prequels, you know, it was all said and done. I loved them. Yeah. Phantom Menace, there was a lot of excitement, a lot of hype built around that. There was three, I think there was only three billion dollar movies in the 90s. Titanic, Jurassic Park, and I think Phantom Menace. Now that may have had to do with a re-release, 3D re-release, something like that. But anyway, yeah. like yeah. it's one of the only three billion dollar movies we saw that was released in the 90s. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal. The hype was real. So when Star Wars has been gone for, you know, a decade and it gets bought by Disney, we get all this exciting stuff. There was a lot of people that wanted in on that hype train, especially building off. I do think I, I will give you like that. I do think that nerd culture in general, there was more of like a normie feel to it. People thought, oh, it's cool to be a nerd. I want to get in the MCU. I want to get into all these things. Star Wars became like that. People right. that wanted to get a shirt from Target or something yep. that had this on it to be part of this club. So I think that's part of like what you saw. Yeah. But um, and that then you get this two billion dollar Force Awakens, you know, mammoth. Yeah. But I think that 
a, a lot of the people that watch it, they came to be part of that cultural event and that phenomenon to take a picture, be like, look where I was here, but they're not dedicated fans. They're going to continue to watch stuff over and over again. And now yeah. the people that did come in for that, let's face it, half of them were gone by the time Rise of Skywalker came out. Yeah. That movie made half of what Force Awakens made. Yeah. And now I think uh, the more shit that comes out, the, every time we get an Obi-Wan that drives away another half of the prequel fans that came there to watch it, every time yeah. we get stuff like this, more people just abandon ship. And it's going to take a lot for them to come back. Uh, and I, I don't know what that is. No, I agree. I don't disagree at all. Maybe Bad Batch. <laughs> how, how do you feel about them using the phrase M count? Instead of just I, saying midichlorians, you fucking cops. It pisses me off because I feel like what Dave is doing, he's like, oh, people had a problem with midichlorians and the word midichlorians. Like, Dude, what the fuck are you using M count for? Just say midichlorians. Like, what's the big deal? George wanted it to be midichlorians. It's not M count. It's yeah, it's like what? Dave Floney is really disrespecting George Lucas' <laughs> legacy. Ooh, that was, yeah, I didn't like that. That, that, that. I had a problem with. I'm like, why is he calling it M count, dude? He's just like, call it midi chlorians. It's literally what it is. It's like they they want to use the concept, but they don't want to say the word. It's yeah. like as if it's the word that people actually had a problem with. I never had any problem with it. No, I thought um, it was cool. Yeah, because to me, it's just a it's just a scientific way to measure this mystical effect. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't bother me. No. Um, just literally just a way to measure and explain how how why some people have the capacity to potentially be more powerful than others yeah um but it's power level yeah but the, the fact that they're just using the word m count now is just so stupid yeah i don't i'm not a fan i like i like midi chlorine it's like we haven't heard midi chlorine since revenge of the sith uh, no since phantom menace mm -hmm. yeah, um because palpatine say, didn't say we ma manipulate midi chlorines he said life Mahler, what do you think about um what's your first impression of the bad batch crew so wrecker hunter omega and crosshair um i thought crosshair was pretty edgy and i thought it was really funny that he had a crosshair in his face i don't know what the fuck they're doing with that but then uh he's probably my favorite by the time i hit the end of the three episodes uh hunter's just generic wreck is retarded and omega's annoying that's my all, all it took was three episodes of a third season and he already got all the characters nailed um if tech was still alive you'd just say that tech is autistic um and and you'd be like completely right and he's awesome but he's that, freaking Cro he's a genius crosshair is my favorite because he just he's just ready to die basically yeah he's just like i i i, I do like he is my favorite of the group because he's just so cranky and hates everything and just wants to be left alone to die and i i sympathize with that fuck dude that's fucking depressing jesus it's just uh he you know literally me that's that's how you feel about good old oh, crosshair i feel like um, i'm kind of like wrecker and crosshair put together you think you are i think so so you're retarded and you want to die <laughs> no, he's not retarded he's just happy <laughs> what he's just happy dude oh so you're a mix between you're happy and you want to die no i'm a mix between i'm happy if i'm left alone Mm. All right. I feel beautiful. Um, I thought some of the dialogue was really funny. Um, <laughs> you, you, you and Denis Villeneuve. Uh, <laughs> who's it? Is it written by Dave or is it just sort of Dave adjacent? I, I, I don't think Dave writes any of these. He's the producer. He created the whole thing. And I, I, I don't. He's not even like the supervising director. I think it's Brad Rao, but it, obviously Dave works close with this story. But he's not a writer of any of these. There's so much like so many lines that I feel like the person who wrote it was like, mm, yeah, think about that. When it's like, holy shit, that's some of the most generic shit I've ever heard. Like, um, you trust too easily, and then the response is maybe you don't trust enough. Like, okay, okay, but it's um, a child. Yeah. What's her line supposed to be? Like something. So storytelling, right? When when you want to get ideas across, there are loads of really subtle ways you can do it, or inflections, or different actions characters can take that imply positions they hold. Yeah, you don't have to. You could, you could even have it just look down and look back up and be like, "I'm not going to give up on you." Someone, someone, someone. You could have child dialogue that doesn't just 
reflect like a yeah i, I got it you, you you you're both opposites of a coin almost and together you're gonna you're gonna be able to do it like um actions always have consequences sometimes not in the way that we will imagine that's just just amusing to me like it's, yeah you got it that's very true that's like an episode stinger line like a oof yeah think about that um this, this like i said there's some stuff i like in you but uh a lot of it, I'm just like. Mm. I mean, look, let, it's it's the Bad Batch. It's not gonna. It's not the original trilogy, right? So it's not. You made it's a it's a fucking child. What um, what I was hoping. She, she's um, annoying as hell, but it's a child at the end of the day, and I think it's supposed to really portray the fact that she's like unbelievably optimistic and sees the good in everyone, kind of like Ahsoka did, and that's just kind of annoying, but. That's her thing. She's like pure. She's like she's like you at the start of every one of these seasons. Well, wait. I, I don't agree with any of this. Like, why why does why does the character have to be annoying just because they're positive and believes in people? We just have I love that. that, that that's so funny because uh, so, the Ahsoka description is funny because she was described as annoying as fuck too when she first came out. Yes, she was. Yeah. It's funny that, that, that well because that's just it's just that's just the character they wanted. They wanted a, a character who's yeah, extremely like, optimistic and sees the good in everybody, even. Either of you see the One Piece adaptation on Netflix? I didn't, no. Like, the main character in that, Luffy, is, like, hyper-positive, and his whole thing is he wants to get everybody he meets to achieve their dreams. He's, a, he's like, one of the best characters in the show. And he's, like, a kid. I don't understand why we have to... They have to be annoying because they're a kid? No, not at all. But she's just still pure. She hasn't been uh, tainted by or jaded by the world. Sure. I think that's nice. Yeah, that's great. I, I'm saying like we could we could do it better is what, is what he, I would hope for. He's saying you can have a oh, nice, yeah. like pure character, but some of the like literally like basic level writing, like, well, you know, sometimes you shouldn't do those things. And so it says, Well, you know what? Sometimes you should. <laughs> like, yeah. That type of level of writing is like all over Clone Wars, period, but also like so, I mean, it, it's sim it is very simplistic, rudimentary storytelling very often. Yeah, and I don't feel um, like the need to make excuses sure. and it doesn't ruin it entirely or anything. I just want to just want to make sure it's recognized that that's the kind of stuff we deal with and that it, there's no reason it can't be better than that. I don't know why it is. Oh, of uh, course it could be. Absolutely. I, I was shot. I thought for sure at some point um, that there was going to be like a definitive moment where Crosshair like they showed him having the moment where he could have escaped and just left Omega and didn't. And obviously, like he did do that. He came and helped her and stuff. But I, I was thinking that they were going to make it an actual like moment call back to when he was like, if I get an opportunity, I'll leave you right here. I don't yeah. care about you. Yeah. Um, but they didn't do. That. Hmm. Maybe they still will. What's the uh, what's the hand thing? Because they were making references to that. Is that like is he degrading over time or something? Yeah. So he was uh he was frozen basically. He was like in the very cold uh in season two. And I personally think it's more interesting if they're doing experiments on him because he is one of the, the clone ninety nines. So he is like special in a sense. So I feel like they're doing more testing on him and tech and omega. And I would love it if they were actually doing if they were like injecting him with Palpatine's blood or something, kind of like they did with Grievous and Sifo-Dyas, to see if he responds to it, and it's like actually fucking him up. Have so have you noticed that Hemlock often grabs his hand? Nope, like I've noticed for this one and the last couple episodes of season two. Hemlock, he because I think he wears a glove on one hand. He's like yeah, he always yeah, yeah he's he always grabbing it like he's like grabbing it very often. Okay, and yeah, I think, not, yeah. And I think it would be interesting if that's some side effect, like that shaking is some side effect from that gas. Remember the gas that they used on Crosshair that Hemlock has like got immunity to that he built up yeah. a tolerance to. I yeah. wonder if that side effect, it might be some side effect from that gas, and that Hemlock is actually has that as well, mm, and that's why he grabs his hand. I, I, I don't know. That's just like a. It's a Star Wars theory I have. It's a Ryan like, theory. Ooh, the RK know. Outpost theory. Yeah. But uh, that would actually like connect some dots and shit. So it's probably not that. <laughs> so Omega's gonna Omega's blood has the key to making Palpatine clones, huh? Uh yeah, it 
So what I understood from that was that it's not that it's force sensitive, but that it can bind to his midi chlorians in his blood. So, so that means I mean, if they clone her, then uh they could they could use her blood or DNA to make Palpatine clones, perhaps, because it would bind to it. So cloning cloning people who are force sensitive or cloning people he can use the force is something that's like very difficult um to yeah. do. And obviously it is because that would kind of be like a big cheat code. You could mm -hmm. just like go to Camino and clone a thousand a hundred thousand Jedi or something and like have your Jedi army. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, using the Dave Filoni theory of everyone can use the force, just like George Lucas said in one interview in 1980, you could just do that with all the clones, period. Um, so you wouldn't need a Jedi army, but ignoring that. Um, so really what, what this kind of stems from in my mind, the way that like going with this is they're taking this old idea from the expanded universe, which uh, a lot of is ripped off in Bad Batch, including Mount Tantus, including Wayland, including the idea that there's a secret cloning facility there, all these things. And what they had to do, um, one of the things that Thrawn found out was that he could use extremely accelerated um, cloning techniques and grow people in like a matter of weeks if you kept them it outside of the force effectively. And they had a bunch of Yelsamari, which are create these little force bubbles, things like that. Um, so I think they're kind of like using that idea of the force being in, inherently tied into cloning and things like that to talk about how difficult it is to clone force sensitives. And that's what Project Necromancer, and that's really what, all the way to like getting baby Yoda, like it's mm. all about getting that blood for this cloning procedure so yeah. that they can clone force sensitives and force sensitive bodies. Right. That's what it feels like to me. That's what it feels like to me too. I find all this incredibly uninteresting. Like that they would be pursuing so hard this fucking plot line. The the three episodes oh. big revelation is that Omega is going to have blood that's super important to the cloning process to make force sensitive clones that may lead into the replication of Palpatine or the creation of Snow things. I feel like that's a complete misunderstanding of what the strengths of Star Wars is. And it's almost a waste of time because if all of this leads to a story that we don't care about, then it was all a fucking waste. You see, I care about Palpatine cloning himself because that's something that he would have done. The dude loves himself. He definitely would have cloned himself. I could see him going from Revenge of the Sith into wanting to clone himself. And I want to see how this actually fails from now until the original trilogy. So this has to it has to be like come close to something or whatever, and then it fails completely. Maybe all the plans are destroyed, and Palpatine's left with kind of picking up the pieces and fragments and shards of whatever is left. And in turn, he creates Shithead Snoke. That, fine. Okay, because you're keeping the sequel trilogy at bay. You're keeping it way over there. But to say that, oh, he's been trying to create Snoke this entire time, I think that's... But like, what does that do for you, though? If that's the story, what, like, what, what does that, what does that mean for any of us that that's the story? It's just like, okay, I, I, well, I don't we think have nowhere that, else to go. So, just my opinion is that this is not about him creating Snoke. This is about him creating like clones for himself. Mm -hmm. That's what I think Project Necromancer is. The reason I being, hope. like, right, because the idea of necromancy, uh, the act of you know using some sort of magical force to bring someone back from the dead. Yep. That really wouldn't make sense as a code word if it was just creating another being that is Snoke. But the, the name itself inherently implies that he's talking about bringing himself back from the dead. Yep. So I don't think... But yeah, the way he would do that, there's a possibility that he would just use essence transfer and just put his whatever into another body. It doesn't have, necessarily have to be him. So that's just what I'm kind of concerned about. It's like, okay, are they going to create fucking Joe Blow and then he's going to be like, all right, me. Kind of like what he did in Dark Empire, where he was going to go into Leia and Han's kid. He's going to go into Anakin, <laughs> baby Anakin. Baby. Yeah. He's going to go into that, baby Anakin. Like, how would that work? <laughs> like, eh, he, he, uh, he would go into baby Anakin and then crawl his way out of Leia and rule the galaxy. I guess. 
Okay, so uh, here's another monkey wrench then that I'll throw in. If it did lead to Snoke, as far as I'm concerned, that doesn't actually lock you off from interesting stories, but that they're not capable of telling them. If Snoke were created in some test tube, had sentience, was not controlled, per se, but gradually is characterized, trained, and understands his place, being that he's going to rule while Palpatine recovers if anything should go wrong or something. There's a whole story we could build up there that would be super interesting, and it could actually help the sequels in theory, though I don't believe that they would ever be able to pull that off. So what I think... Okay, Rise of Skywalker made Ray's dad a basically castrated from the Force clone of Palpatine. All right, so what if there were some versions of Palpatine that were actually Force-sensitive during this time... I don't know, maybe they, maybe, you know, from the Force Unleashed 2, when they cloned Galen Merrick, he went crazy, there were like a million versions of him where he was like defective, he went crazy, he was right. nuts, he was psychopathic, maybe this one he actually ends up like that, and he fucking turns on the Emperor. Could you imagine like a, a, a realm where there's a good Palpatine, basically Starkiller? What if, I mean, fuck, they, I don't think they would do something that cool, but I wish... Maybe that's Ray. Ray's the good Palpatine. She is the Omega of Palpatine. She's actually she actually is not a, like a child. She was she's also a clone. But I don't really I don't like that entire thing because obviously Ian McDermott even told us like Palpatine fucks right. Mm -hmm. so, okay, but that's just Ian McDermott saying funny stuff. Oh, I. Listen, that is the source right there. Yeah, him and, him and George talked in detail. No, they, had, uh, yeah. they had a six-hour meeting about the ways positions. that Palpatine fucks, the p positions he prefers, how long he lasts, if he used the Force to right. you know, control his blood flow. He would have right. read the Karma Sithra. <laughs> if, if he likes to be, if he, if he likes to be Force karma, choked in bed. The Karma Sithra. All right, All right let's not get weird here. Uh, <laughs> too late for that yeah. I, I, I literally have invite a dune us on this popcorn thing. bucket yeah, literally like we enter the stream he's like fisting the dune popcorn bucket <laughs> <laughs> now, I, now i just want a bunch of clips of like palpatine saying sexual things Listen, you, you, just, you just need his regular quotes it's a pathway to many abilities some consider unnatural <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh, oh, I'm afraid I don't use protection. I do shit like that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Execute order 69. There you dun, go. Yeah. Dun, dun. Oh, God. <laughs> I could keep going on this. I'm afraid the Cialis will be fully operational when you arrive. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> the force is strong <laughs> with you. I always uh, thought he sounded like a horn dog on that one. So. Oh yeah. no! <laughs> oh no! Yeah, that was yeah, that was the. Uh, and then yeah, he was like, Ugh. yeah, the the, the the noises he's making when he first like yeah becomes all Sithy. <laughs> it's, becomes it's all like, Sithy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought that was funny as well. Even as he's a kid, like, I was like, all right, what's he doing? He's like. Ugh. It was like the the dark side is like just creeping out of him. Or something. It's been it's been like hiding in there for fifty years, and it's now just spewing. Out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like you could make. There's a lot of stories about like Palpatine fucking that I think would be more entertaining than the Bad Batch. Probably not for children. <sighs> Jesus. But uh... I, I I think you know what I think the Bad Batch should have been about. Instead of bringing in the Palpatine, the cloning shit, like the stuff for Palpatine to clone himself, Project Necromancer, yeah. tying it into the Force, all this shit, it really should have just been about the clones and how they were treated, how they were ousted. And you get a lot of that in Bad Batch anyway, about like how the feeling is now that they're bringing in normal stormtroopers and the clones are getting phased out. Yeah. And like, I think there's a lot of good shit you can have in there. Yeah. without it having to be tied to everything else like this. Like, come on. Let's see a good vision of this. <laughs> I can't hold it any longer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too weak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
Okay. Oh no, it's begun. Uh oh. It's begun. Shit. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so? <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, uh, I guess we'll get the super chat. <laughs> Oh, we got plenty to talk about. You guys already dubbed with episodes one, two, and three. You you know what I thought was like such a big waste of fucking time in two was that they find these other three clones, the cadets, and I I don't think there needed that those need to be two separate episodes. I think you could have told the story you needed to tell if you combined one and two. I don't think they needed to be separate. Um, like, but I think that. When I look at the second episode, if they were going to like take those cadets with them and they were going to be like part of their crew or something and they were going to help, then I could see you doing that episode and maybe they will down the line so you can put like a pin in that. But for them to just bring them on board and then take them back to the planet just so they can go back and like look for Omega again, I think it's a massive waste of time. Well, it was dumb as fuck as well, because the three kids are like, you need to go all the way to here to get the information to take it to the next place. It's very video gaming. It's like, okay, by the end of it, they arrive to essentially save them in the ship from that area. And it's like, so if all of you just gotten in the ship to begin with and gone there, that would have been way faster and way more efficient. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, it's And they would have been, like, been able to potentially steal the ship like they want to do anyway, clearly. Um, it's funny because I, somebody that was watching it also told me it felt video gamey to them. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's funny you mentioned like that, but it's a filler true, episode. Yeah. The fact yeah. that everything is self-contained, right? It's like we need to go to to you know, let's just say C, and it's like, well, we have to go to A first to get the information. Which, by the way, has that woman been introduced before the leaders of, of whatever faction that is? She was fucking st- stupid as hell. They have a it, bounty out for this person. They provide the bounty, and then she's like, "Wow, pretty bold to want to speak to me." It's like we have what you want. That you owe us. Oh like, yeah, the, in the, the beginning. Bounties work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah. What? Do, do you have any idea who that? Well, I, I didn't recognize no. that person, theory. Did you? Uh, no, I didn't recognize her, but she's part of a clan, a uh, syndicate. Uh, like the syndicate or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. There but, was a no. The the dude was in the other Bad Batch episode. He's a Davaronian. The, the guy with the freaking the, chopped the, off the, thing, the fucked up horn. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Because he's a new. I love me. Um. I love me a Which ruthless is, leader. But she's she was like retarded. She said, "You have a lot of courage to demand an audience." Like they have her bounty. That's the type of strong women you can expect in all Dave Filoni's projects. Smaller, just so you know. Well, the um, way I took that was that like, sorry, go ahead, I interrupted. I, I was just gonna say the Davaronian female Davaronians didn't always have horns like that. So I don't know if that's the first one we've seen. Uh, that was, that's a change from what they used to look like, but. Changes happen. What was and, funny uh, is I used to look like the the women. I can't remember. They used to they used to have like either really small ones, but kind of like normal people, with, but just like pale skin. Right. We saw one in the cantina, I think, in A New Hope. Right. Um. Let me look. Um. female. I believe we did. Remember shoot? Yeah. I remember there was a in the cantina. Yeah. They they didn't they didn't look like male davaronians with those fucking horns so oh, that that is a massive it. lore mistake um which is yeah very massive different. catastrophic it, very again like no, the normal person watching that probably doesn't care but it's just like one thing that's like god how fucking simple is that i don't know if they wanted to make her look like she had horns or like maybe she's horns, the queen whatever. yeah the way i took that was like oh how dare you like because they're supposed to probably supposed to tell the representative or whatever or her like they did though that was what private. we were told. So they told the guy, and then the guy told her, and then she agreed. That's what we are told happened. She said they asked for an audience with her to provide the bounty, and then she said that was bold of you, but had accepted. And then, as per the bounty, they're supposed to receive something, in this case, information. Well, she's and when the guy walks up to them to tell them, he's like, here are the coordinates, and the guy's is verified, and then she says, take it before my generosity runs out. It's like, it's not generosity, it's like, it's bitch. Like that, this is a bounty. It's a, it's a fucking bounty. Ba- yeah, that's the transaction. You know what's funny, though, is I was like, wait, that first guy in the scene who got killed, who apparently was traitor, like he was running like a, a coup or something, and possibly because she's a weak leader. I was like, oh, yeah. is that how she's a weak leader? She's like an idiot. <laughs> I was like, is that is that supporting <laughs> that maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, I don't know. So in the chat, who said Ryan bitching about nothing again, 
just because like you're too ignorant to know that like doesn't mean that like yeah it's I, mean, right. other I, people I just, I just ignore those i saw a few of those be like what yeah. does this channel become it's like it's like three star wars nerds and people of what did you say we're talking about talking about, about star the wars like like yeah what, what the f like well, what do you want we're three bros just talking about we're nerding out like we're looking up fucking davronian females versus males like we you know, I think it's a great show. So, hey, a lot of people love it. There's m more views on this show than there was ever, ever on any other of my podcasts here. So, um, and Star Wars is pretty dead right now. So, I mean. What do you mean? Bad Bash Season 3 Bros. Let's go. <laughs> yes. I can't wait for the release of Episode 4. Hey, I'm I'm excited. I like it. That's the horniness of Palpatine. It's gonna be the Let's do four. five things Mahler loved about the Bad Batch. Okay. I hmm, hmm oof. I think I think I liked cross his, uh, we've already gone over it but it counts cr cross his uh disdain for life uh yes. <laughs> that was uh, that's uh, that's a big old fun one hmm what else I uh oh, just sifting through all my complaints there's got to be something in here uh, <laughs> did you like how the water faucet dripped <laughs> I mean, um, hmm? they, they, yeah, they kept using that as like a passage of time or, or like a, a starting shot, oh, right? They, in her thing. Yeah. yeah um, Basically, like that to me is just like same shit, different day, like the loneliness. So like, kind of. I appreciate the effort with the animation. You know, I like the cinematography and bit, bit, bit pieces of it. Um, hmm. That's three things. Isn't that close to five? It's like the same. Yeah, you're, you're good. <laughs> right, so if you notice when she starts writing on the wall with the, the tallying up the days, I think mm -hmm. we start it around day 25. So we this is a 25-day gap between season two and three. Fair I think. enough. It, is that it? That's... Uh, I think so. Man, her hair... I felt like her hair got longer. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Well, so that's where we start. Then we do a time skip that's... Okay. Uh, All right. We go from... I think we go from something like two weeks to... Or three weeks to... Uh, I, I couple, remember looking at like the tally. A months or something. Twenty three weeks is what I had noted is, is where we end up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is a long time then. Which I um, there you go. That's another thing I like. I like that they tell us that, which is to justify her relationship with the the dog thing developing. Though the batcha. only reason, the only batcha. reason that, I, I had to heal Batcha so he could help me later. Come on, Batcha. Well, I was gonna say from a Ryan perspective, like I appreciate that they say it takes a long time to bind a, a human and animal, at least somewhat significantly when it's a fucking feral dog that's designed to kill things. <laughs> but the reason that we even get that opportunity is because apparently it rejected the normal food, so she had to find a way to feed it other food. And I was like, that mm -hmm. that happening means that they're allowed to do a shit ton more. Th you know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but in the first season, there was something where like her and Hunter got lost on some planet. Do you remember Ryan? Do you remember this? Hunter, yeah, and then she like did the same sort of thing with an animal there. So it's like she almost has beast control, which like yeah, it's because she's force does. sensitive because she's a special clone. You think she's force sensitive? I don't know. Like I, I feel like that. I, I felt like from the beginning, like from season one, that was like kind of the implication. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I feel like she we're gonna find a, out very soon based on her M count. She might be a Mandalorian Jedi. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, I've never seen any of those before. Mm. Especially female Mandalorian Jedis. Mm. So, the plot that runs through the three episodes, I think, is fundamentally broken. And let me explain why. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, uh, we, we open with the idea that we're getting blood samples taken from all kinds of clones to just keep testing in different ways to figure out how we're going to benefit this, this project that they're working on. And that the key is actually in her blood, which Nala say Nala say that's the name of the Nala say right? Nala saw Nala. <laughs> she knows <laughs> that uh, Omega's blood is going to be the key to it, so she's she's deliberately sabotaging any attempts to get her blood in there. I thought that was a really uh, I like I'd seen the three episodes and I had to go back and check. So I was like, how did this even happen? Like, how did it get to a point where the, that they hadn't tested her blood? And it's really odd because the blood gets taken by the other female clone girl. Emery. And then carried into the other room where Nala say does the actual like putting it into the machine. So I was already like, wow, that's that's incredibly lucky, right? Like if anyone else ever did it at any point, then yeah. it would be over for Omega. But okay, yeah. we'll buy that. I, I, the thought I had in my head was like, I have to go check. How did she know which blood sample was even Omega's? And it's weird because she puts them on like a table and they scan it. And then the computer says like, this is Omega's blood sample. 
I was like, how would it know which one's Omega's blood sample if the blood sample's never been put into the computer for testing anyway? Oh, they've they've tested all the clones. I so they know, know they know the DNA of every single clone. But they've not been able to test them against whatever this new project is. No, because they're injecting what I think is Palpatine's blood. And seeing if it like doesn't if it binds or if it rejects it or Yeah. So but, we, uh, but, but I don't think we've ever seen that happen to Omega though. What do you mean? Have we ever seen like what has she gotten in injected with? She's only had samples taken, <clears throat> yeah? She had her blood sample taken, and then Palpatine's blood was being injected into every vial. Yeah, but like Nala says, is sabotaging it so that her sample never gets into the machine. Yeah, yeah uh, like, um, like what, what I'm what I'm saying is like, I didn't, I don't really understand why they're testing the same people like every single. I, I guess unless they are doing changes to whatever blood. I they're assume they're, in, like, they're remixing whatever, and using. I assume things. it's because clones mutate. It was, I think there's a lot of answers you could have to that question. I was more confused because I was like, okay, so if she's on record, then surely they have records of which samples are actually getting the completed tests. They should have like a, a X fill or what, I'm not sure what the word would be, but just like a report of like, so the sample, blah, 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 fail, sample, blah, 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 fail. And uh, Omegas would never turn up in those because they're all removed beforehand. Yeah. And I was just like, how did she get away with this for half a year? Like, that they never had a test come through for Omega's blood. It's the only one that gets entered but doesn't exit. I, I think that Nala say probably like the reason, she, reason she was the one doing the blood. This is my like good faith, like trying to explain away is like she wanted complete control of the project. She was already obviously, so you didn't see this, Mahler, but in season two, Nala say basically refuses to work for, uh, What's his name? Um, fucking bad. Oh yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. I got that from from these because they said that the yeah. only reason they get Nala say to work is by having Omega in the yeah. in the so, station. So my my assumption is, all right, she's like, hey, I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna fucking run this entire thing, blah blah blah. And so she probably just controls everything. I think the first time anyone had not done it was when Emery did it for, her and saw what happened. But yeah so that's, that's, from, just, from that's, my just, point of that's view, just me like making up stuff for them you know um considering nala th this actually comes up later as well the surprising amount of control and power for, for nala considering how she's not trusted at all like her data pad can have control over the whole station seemingly that is a retarded thing like the fact that those data pads can be taken from one area and it works anywhere it doesn't like it's wild to me that it doesn't matter, like, well, like or that either she, either that, or she has like complete control and access of every single <coughs> station, like you said. It was weird that Omega was told, like, pick up uh, Nalase's pad from the room, and then that'll give you access to all kinds of things, including prison cells for some reason. But the thing is, when she runs into the room, it doesn't look like she gets Nala's pad specifically. I think she does, but it doesn't feel that way. It just feels like it's a pad off the wall. You know what I mean? You, you could just grab it, and now you have a key to basically the entire base. Maybe that feels it was, strange. Wait, wait, was it Emery's actually? Um, I can't remember. Well, so I was going to say, I've got notes about this. It's like either it's a random one, which is still bad, or it's Nala's one, which doesn't make sense. Or I, I think it's the female one clones. I... I think it's the female clones one because she would have walked in there, done the stuff and start working on it. And I do even think when she came down and they escaped, she was like, I think she explained it away. Like she grabbed my, maybe she said I grabbed a pad. I don't remember though. Yeah. Cause it's like, I could have sworn Nala said like, get it from her quarters or whatever or like like her room i don't know but um, i still thought it was fucking wild how much power you get from those tablets when they don't have like a sign in or anything you just grab it yeah kind of makes everything work out which uh you know stresses. yeah I, I said that during the episode I'm like this is like stupid that this pad works literally everywhere for everything it's weird how much star wars has like given up on trying to create reasonable ways of getting into or out of bases in all of its like newer stories across the board essentially because you know they it's a staple of star wars i think breaking into and out of a you know evil bases you, you gotta love it it pops up all over the place but um you know you remember kenobi it was like oof. it just they ain't trying you know not like they used to <laughs> yeah like who yeah. would like of course that's how they should have got out they should have walked out the front door with a big jacket and just yeah had, yeah yeah crosshair you know... could have waited more a big jacket and she could be hiding under it it'd be great exactly. good reference to you know <laughs> people would be like oh People like, I remember that from Kenobi. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Nostalgia, bro. <laughs> Do you think we're ever going to see Reba again? Oh, fucking hell. Only she reminds if me we of get um, Kenobi season two. 
remember that thing? I, was, I think it was the last Stargraft episode. Where I was mm-hmm. talking about the the lady from the MCU who's got more power now than anyone else. Like she's like yeah, Reva. You were right? me this. Uh, I don't know if they'll you. the creators create these characters, and I don't know if we'll ever see them again. I don't know if if it's like a wild fucking idiotic decision, and then no writers pick them up. Right? Future writers are coming on projects and just be like, I don't fucking care about that. I'm gonna make my own guy. Yeah, they probably just drop them in there to be used. Yeah, yeah, potentially. It's a kid's cartoon, not going to be as nuanced as a 007 movie. Can we stop, please, with the kids' movies of shit? Stop. I feel like I feel like Bad Batch could absolutely be as nuanced as a Roger Moore 007 movie. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> we went over this last week. <laughs> gonna, yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Who's that <laughs> sheriff that shows up everywhere? That's, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about in the Roger Moore movies? <laughs> yeah. He's like, right, you, I don't even want to do it. I'm going to say something super racist. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember. China, that one where they're like at China or whatever, and he's like vacation in China. He just says something super fucking racist. Do you remember what I'm talking about? No. God. I got to find that clip. I guess that would be right up your alley, right? Mahler, you know who that sheriff is, right? <laughs> oh, dude. Like, remembering names and stuff. I know who you're talking about, but like, I can't remember who. I was I was trying to look up 007 Sheriff and I looked up Mauler Sheriff. I don't think that's gonna work. <laughs> There's your brain for you. <laughs> James Sheriff uh Sheriff Pepper. That's his name. Um let's see if I can find. Oh, that was another funny line. Do not question my loyalty to science, Doctor. <laughs> that sounded like uh that would be a 007 villain line. Even though it's from Dollar, I think not a not a bad guy. Um, which I imagine would be even funnier if I knew the history of like how much she's not cooperated previously, right? Because she's trying to convince him that she's she's into the project, even though she won't work on the project if not for using Omega as like a leverage. I'm going off what's said in the episodes, by the way. I don't know if you guys have more information on that. Hold on. Look at him, Sheriff Pepper. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so said the man in the golden gun. Yes, yes, it was a man in the golden gun. Um, yeah, we got 3,400 people here. Let's get over 1,000 likes. That'd be much appreciated. Ryan, if you're telling people to hit like, I feel like you have a much more uh, hey angry way of doing it. Hit hit like. Um, well, I'm cross here. I don't care if you hit like. I'd rather die. Um, <laughs> this is the guy I was talking about right here. What's the matter, J.W. Huff? You just cry that in my you boy! <laughs> <laughs> this, what the this, hell? This, yeah, this guy, he, he pops up in, like, every place that uh, Roger Moore's James Bond ends up in for some reason. But I, I don't want to play the whole thing because, obviously, copyright, but yeah. it just fucking reminded me of that. He's just saying, like, very offensive shit to all the Thailand people the entire time. Oh, my God. <laughs> so. It was the 70s. Um... Do you, any of you guys have trouble with the part where, like, the robot is like, the dog's gonna die because it's too domesticated, stupid fuck, you made it friendly. And then I was, first of all, just thinking to myself, like, man, she's lucky that dog wasn't killed while she was just out, you know? And that was that. But also that she stops that whole, the, all that happening by pulling the tablet away from the security droid, like, no, I, when it, with, with the freaking like, vice grip, like yeah, they like wrestle over it. I was like, "That's a droid, man! Like, that's, like, that's a fucking buff machine, fucking droid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking Terminator! <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> Give me it! Oh, oh no, she has taken the pad. It's like, kill oh. her. <laughs> like, well, yeah, he was gonna I, stun her, right? I, I thought that was still pretty. Like, oh, okay, cool. Well, right. look, at the end of the day, we kind of have to give it some grace and realize this is basically a kids' show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can I still don't... get this so done. It's like, that's... That's she why would I'm sabotage like, okay, the whatever. droid, right? With intelligence. She wouldn't yeah. use her if, physical prowess as a little was, girl to defeat the droid. If this was the Kenobi show or some shit like that, I'd be like, no tolerance for this bullshit at all. I, but it's a kid's show. So, so I'm just like watching. I'm like, all right, yeah, it's believable. I, I talked <laughs> about that a little last time. I think that was last week where I, I said, I think that sometimes in animation, we, we judge a little bit differently or are willing to like look over certain things. However, at the end of the day, these episodes matter just as much to the world of Star Wars and the story of Star Wars and the lore building and continuity. They they have just as much value as every live action show. So I, I, I agree with that. I think that they still need to be looked at and evaluated, um, like you know, in certain ways. We have it can be a kids show while also just moving a couple of things around to make this make a little bit more sense. Like uh, 
her knowing that happens, she can then sabotage systems ahead of time. Maybe you know, like the 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 thing that's going to erase or destroy this this creature, she can empty the 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 kennel first or something, move it out, or have something in there that gets destroyed that the robot thinks is it's like oh complete good, yeah. and then moves the 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 friendly one into a new cage and just be like oh yeah new uh new whatever the fuck they're called and just something clever. Instead of I pulled it off you, then press the buttons fast enough so that the block falls on him, but then he's just like, security, stop <laughs> it. I I also think that this show specifically is I, I, I don't know how much it's made for kids versus how much it's made for adults that watch Clone Wars. Uh I think it's both. I think more so for I think this one's more so for kids, probably. It seems the it, it seems like they want people to take it more seriously than that. This one does, yeah, for sure. But I think it's still in the world of animation, which is like, you know, you have stupid stuff happening, like Omega taking the data pad from a droid. That Like, un unrealistic, because it's a cartoon, so they can get away, away with stuff. But then again, they did stupid-ass shit in Kenobi with, like, the slapping. Or like the chasing of the nine year old and they couldn't catch her. And they're like, well, and for <laughs> reference, there are people who say, like, why do you nitpick this, that, and the other when even George has said the kids are supposed to be the ones like the main target for the OT or whatever. Space wizards, bro, you know, like stop taking it so seriously. When as far as I'm concerned, like all the Real best pictures. all the best kids content in the world does uh keep things in line with like what it establishes itself. It so people have been sharing it recently about Incredibles, but do you remember the scene where they basically uh, Helen explains to her kids that they could be killed and they need to take this seriously? Yeah, it's like that's, that, that is for kids. kids. Kids are watching that movie, but it's like very serious and it makes the stakes work a bit better as well. I, yeah. I think a lot of like huge major franchises, even if the target demographic is children, the the ones that really become massive are the ones that are appealable to everyone because of the storytelling. Something like Harry Potter, right? obviously the, the target age group for that is people that are aging kind of like with the books like so many of us mm. did is we were kind of reading them growing up right but the the reason that it became so massive is because parents were reading it too and, yeah. and, and everyone like consistently has like gotten so into that world so despite it the target age range being a certain thing the story was good the characters were great the world building was so unique that people felt so invested across all ages that they loved that thing it's like it's you know for the people who watch the Clone Wars and then now their kids as well. Yeah, I just I would I would be interested to see like how many kids are watching Bad Batch right now. Probably a lot. I imagine the vast majority of the kids watching it are kids who have been shown it by their parents who are interested in Star Wars to begin with. Most They're likely. Like, yeah. Yeah, watch this. I can watch it with you. This is vaguely Star Wars ish. Yeah. Do you remember when um, Nala says to uh, to Omega, if your sample gets submitted, you're going to be in incredible danger? And then she looks at her and says, is that why you've been destroying them? <laughs> and I, I thought it was so funny because I feel like Nala would have been like, yes, retard. That's what I just said. Except she would have said it like this. Yes, you <laughs> little retard. <laughs> we don't have much time. Omega with like, with like, every second. Bro, yeah, exactly. Like I get that that's kind of the the cadence that we've come to expect from Kaminoans, like from what we've seen. However, in a situation where like literally you don't have any fucking time and you have to get all the information to her right now, you're like, man, you can't speed up the way you speak. Holy shit. <laughs> You know, the, do you remember the, um, the kennel or like whatever it was, the system to keep the uh, the dogs in place? There's like 15 ray shields all in a row that all activate the wrong way around. <laughs> I was like, if they're <laughs> running out, then you got to activate them in the reverse order, you fool. It's like, very, it is very convenient wait, that it's like, brrr, instead of just, well, let's just shut the one just at the one, end. Just one ray shield. Why the fuck are they like 20? Like, what's the point of that? Like, and what Especially are you going to say to me? To stop is, remember yeah. this. It's when they're running out of the uh, little doggo. They're using thing. Batcha's yeah. uh, little escape route. Oh, but it looks cooler that way. I, I was just about to say that's what you'll that's say. Like, oh, like, that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, the idea of what kind of system is that? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Just like stop hilarious. it at the end. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or like just. Oh, I thought they maybe, were trying to evoke like. And just they all come down, or just you need one to come down. I thought they were trying to evoke like Phantom Menace or some shit. It's like loads of red yeah, shield yeah, yeah. doors that are I, coming down. 
Well, I, just, That's, just, I, I actually thought that would have been unique. What, what like ex this could have actually been something fucking interesting with this episode. What if after all this fucking shit, they do that and Omega gets stopped by the fucking race shield and Crosshair is out there yeah. and Crosshair gets left with the decision. Okay, do I fucking wing it, try to find a way to save Omega or do I do what I told you I was thinking of in the first episode? Say, go fuck yourself, every man for himself. See, that'd be cool. But yes. if, he actually, right. if he actually goes and leaves, but then is like trying to come back and save her, that, that'd be dope. Yeah, he, he does the you. thing of yeah. like, you're on your own. And then he, he comes in the nick of time later because he was mm -hmm. he was never going to leave it really. Yeah, so that would be good cool. stuff. That would have yes. been really cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. But... Uh, oh but well at least at least they uh <laughs> i also like the it was interesting to me that the times that we saw like people getting stunned versus people getting shot and i i actually laughed when it was uh i, I laughed when omega like stunned the pilot and he just like slumps over I'm like okay well that guy's um that guy's stunned now and then fucking crosshair just fucking hurls him out. Yeah. He, falls, he falls like a hundred feet clearly to his death. I thought that was so fucking funny. Uh, but also the whole like Emery scene, it's like, Crosshair, what are you doing? Just fucking stun her. Like yeah. I get we want this little monologue from Emery. Fuck off. Just that was that was there being like they they I think they figured when they were making that that the audience is invested in whether or not Emery's gonna choose to go with them or not. And I think this is part of the, the the slight nuance that I think was in the writing is that we're not, I think she chose a middle ground. She could have done more to sabotage them, but she decided not to. That seems to be what's going on. Mm -hmm. So in the second season, I, I feel like you're supposed to feel like she does feel slightly conflicted and she kind of wants to help Crosshair. But at the same time, she does seem loyal to what she's being told. To yeah, do. she seems like she's been beaten down completely by the system. Mm. A bit too afraid to get out of there. But you know, at some point, she's going to have a girl boss moment and break free of the conditioning. I thought it would have been kind of neat if he had stunned her and then just carried her off with them. Or, I'm not sure that you need to build like a better reason for it, but just to have a character who didn't actually want to be with them. Um, but like simultaneously that they wanted to save. I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to rewrite a lot to get her in that position. But I don't know. I like a character who's terrified by the empire and the control that system has to the point where they would never do anything against them that seems a little bit different and stuff reminds me of some other ips that kind of cover it but um someone else at the end of episode three in here where where she escapes omega and then what's his name hemlock is like all right fucking kill him release yeah. the the doggos and stuff i was like whoa 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 whoa. what i was watching i was like you don't want to kill him you need omega because you need nala if you kill Omega, then she, you don't have the leverage on her. And that's like highlighted. And he's like, yeah, well, they fucking escaped. And I was like, what? Like, that's not, I don't even understand. Like, you want to, and then he's like, now launch the recovery team. And I was like, just, just launch the recovery. You don't even, why yeah. are you launching the killer dogs and the recovery team? I don't understand. <laughs> You're not very smart. Uh, and then, of course, by the end of the episode, she's like, she's the one we need. He's like, oh, call him off. And I was like, fucking... why was there no way of downing that ship? It, it happened in Ahsoka. It drives me nuts. You know, the ship going from, you know, the planet to orbit. That would take fucking ages. And it's a transport ship and it's being chased by six ships shooting at it. Yeah. No way in hell it makes it. Uh, Hera did the same thing in Ahsoka and it drove me nuts as well. It's like, Hera you should be dead. kind of annoyed me. Yeah. Yes. I could have used less of Hera talk and more shots of her ass, to be honest. You got plenty. You just I did get a lot. I was surprised. I, I, I don't change my statement at all, though. <laughs> you know what? I support it. I, I understand why Kanan, I understand why Kanan was breaking his Jedi oaths, all right? Why do you need to describe oh, to me the Ryan, plot? Please of the describe to me all the plot of Jedi Prince books. The Jedi Prince books are kind of fucking crazy they got published in the early 90s they were uh I, I think meant for like a younger audience and there is somebody who's like the self-proclaimed son of palpatine who wants to take over and he's going to do this by getting his i think the first one is the glove of darth vader or the fist of darth vader he's trying to get uh like vader's glove and with it, he tricks people into thinking that he can produce force lightning and then there's another guy who is 
the illegitimate son of Palpatine and is like trying to challenge him. It's been a long fucking time since I read any of those books, but they are legitimately fucking wild. So they, they came out in like, again, early, early 90s, like 92 or something like that. I, I, I couldn't describe the plot of all those books, though, other than it takes place kind of in the immediate aftermath of Return of the Jedi when a lot of the Empire is kind of like scrambling around and there's different factions that are being created and shit. People are like in panic mode. People are trying to gather power for themselves. All right. Oh, why do you say that? Love to know what you think. Five two eight zero drone. Emery more like a eh, marry me. Lore breaking potential of acolyte is ridiculous. Yes. Oh is. yeah, with, with with Plagueis. Yes. Well, that's the thing, right? That's what Disney do it is looking for more places they haven't broken yet. <laughs> like, hey, well, yeah. I mean, they're like, look, we, back. the prequels and the originals. What can we do? We can go in the middle of them. Uh, and we can go before and after. Yep. Given how little Dave has cared about contradictions with other stories when making his own, it's very scary that he's trying to build up the sequels. I really hope he's not, dude. Like, fuck. Theory. Theory. Come on. Mm. <laughs> you know it is. It's happening. No. You know it in your bones. You know it in your heart. Right. I, I hope not. I, I got the radical Come position on. that you could still tell some good stories while building up to the sequels. It's not impossible. It's just that I just don't think we're going to see it. I, I, I don't. My thing is, I think that as bad as it is what they ended up doing, the snap decision to bring the emperor back with no forethought and no setup and whatever, I, I think it's almost better to tell a couple stories like they have, like in the comics and, and novels or whatever. For the most part, just fucking leave that shit alone. Leave it a mystery. You know, I, 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 rather than trying to explain in graphic detail all this shit that people hate yeah. um, and explain it away, just tell your fucking own story. Again, Mandalorian, the, the Mandalorian show, we're past this point now, but the Mandalorian show should have had nothing to do with any of this fucking shit. It literally should have just been about a bounty hunter discovering more about his past, d diving into Mandalorian culture. Uh, like the seedy underbelly of society, what shit's like for people that don't care who's in charge, whether it's Empire, Republic, New Republic. Like, that's what this entire thing should have been based off. Not bridging the gap and explaining all these things and having all these different force users. But we're, mm -hmm. the ship has sailed there. Yeah. Since you all loved Rebel Moon, I think you boys would appreciate Zack Snyder's Star Wars by Earl Knotts. I've enjoyed all your individual viewpoints and the excellent conversations between the three of you. JJ from the UK. That video is fucking great. It's the, really uh, funny. Zack Snyder's yeah. Star Wars is a funny video. It I takes like 20 it. takes like twenty minutes to get through because it's all slow-mo. But um, the, um, the exposition parts are brilliant. Like, there's just nothing left for you to misunderstand by the time you watch it in terms of storytelling. That's Zack for you. Um, I have I only watched the first 40 minutes of Rebel Moon, so I can't. Really I watched the it. whole thing, I made that sacrifice. Hey, we did an episode on that. I was like episode two or something hmm. back in the day. Thank you, Normac. Thank you, Darth Demos. I agree with Ryan. Episode one is so boring. Please kill Echo. <laughs> well, you mean Omega? Echo. <laughs> I was about to say, who's Echo? Yeah, Echo's another clone who He's we thought Rex. was dead for a long time, but then got saved in the seventh season of Clone Wars. Wow, spoilers. The, the goon bucket. Right. You'll find, you'll see him. Correction, I mean Omega. Echo is oh. great. <laughs> oh, there you go. Omega and Crosshair escape from Tantis makes Kenobi and Leia escape look even worse. In the Bad Batch, they make it look more realistic and well-written. It's better. I don't think it's good, though. I love how serious Elvis looks in that profile picture. I take him seriously when I see the super chat, too. Um, it, I mean, it, undeniably, <laughs> it's more yeah. well-executed than Kenobi. Yeah. That's true. Oh, easily. Um, however, like we kind of talked about, I, I'm sure the super chat was sent before we like had the discussion about it. I do think there's some like silly things about it, including the pad whatever but. the pad is basically the key to everything right mm -hmm. i would have liked it if they had to work a bit harder to get the pad <laughs> you can't wait to see master windu in bad batch 
mid batch. Mid batch. I agree, John. This theory. I don't. That's too nice. Jacob says, if y'all want a more compelling story <laughs> that includes many of the same plot points as Bad Batch, I recommend the Republic Commando books by Karen Travis. Also has a good amount of cool Mando stuff from book two on. Yes, uh, Republic Commando series from Karen Travis did a lot of work building up clones and Mandalorian culture and things like that. That a lot of it got retconned by shit in TCW in general. Um, to the point where Karen Travis said I'm not working with Lucasfilm again because all the work I did just got like shit on. Um, but the books overall, I think the book series is really good. Ironically, Republic Commando, like the video game Republic Commando, they integrated some of those characters in TCW, um, like Scorch, who even does appear uh, in the, the the Bad Batch as well. So, um, also, how did you call Bad Batch mid when you gave it a three, Ryan? Well, I was just agreeing with him because he looks like all of us. So oh, I was okay. like, yeah, I agree. You're cool. But I, I would say a three would be less than mid. I think four would be the cutoff for mid, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, I guess it would be Bad Bash. <laughs> it's like actually what we think about it. It's yeah. appropriately <laughs> titled. <laughs> I haven't seen the last Airbender show. Oh, I've just seen everyone be mad at it. That's all I've seen. Oh, is it? Oh, no. So I have never seen the animated, so I'm not a good judge based on adaptation. I would say that I, was, I felt it was mid. The, I watched the first three episodes of live action on Netflix. I don't feel the desire to watch it anymore. I, I have the controversial opinion of not thinking Atlas is very good, the animated show, but it's far better than the adaptation. I watched episode one on Netflix and I couldn't do more than that. I was already like, holy shit, they've changed so many things for the worst. Like, I, like, I already don't want to fucking you, watch this. You know who did a lot of work on Last Airbender Animated? Well, first season? Who? Dave, Dave Filoni. Dave. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it's interesting that you think it's kind of mid. Yeah, that would be something I'd be much more comfortable calling mid. This, I would be like, this is offensive to mid. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Revenge of the Grift Monday. So excited for Dune 2. Most hyped I've been for a sci-fi franchise in a while. Just shows how good sci-fi can be. Ah, man, we all want to see it. I've been waiting oh, wait, a yeah, years you, for it. You've seen it, right, Ryan, you said? Yes, or... I have. And would you recommend it to everyone? Uh, it is not a... This is how I'll phrase it. It's... Dune in general, like the franchise, whether it's a movie or the book, is not something like easy to consume, right? It's not an easy read. It's not like mm -hmm. an easy watch. But if you care, if you're into sci-fi, if you're into like detail like that, I think I think it's awesome. I really like the first one. If you like the first one, I think you're really gonna fucking love the second one. Well, here's the question. Are they better consumed together or taking breaks and stuff? They are meant so this is truly a part two. It starts It starts like 10 minutes after the first one ends. Okay, cool. Um, which I was kind of interested to see how they would do that. Um, I don't want to get into any spoilers whatsoever. I know there's a lot of people in the chat haven't seen it, so I'm not going to spoil it at all. But in the source material, there is a time jump. So I was wondering if they're going to do that right off the bat or anything. But it's literally like part one right into part two. Like... As if you went to an intermission, you came back and you just kept playing. I was gonna ask you if this is uh, if this is the end or if there's gonna be a part three, but I guess that's a spoiler. Well, I mean, it's not really. Uh, the Dune books are like fucking seventy years old, so um, mm. Dune and Denis Villeneuve has already said he wants to make Dune Messiah, so he wants to make it a three part story. Dune right, Messiah cool. would be the third part. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. What if truth? What if true flash says, please don't spoil. I will die if he does. Don't worry. I won't spoil it. <laughs> hey, theory. Cal Kestis is my favorite Star Wars character. Would you ever consider making selling his saber? The damaged version from Fallen Order. Um, the full site is coming in just a, I would say probably three weeks, end of March. So I turned 24, 24, <laughs> 34, uh, March 21st. And we're trying to plan it around my birthday because it's, it's, magically just falling around that time but um we're gonna have every saber you could possibly think of we're gonna have empty hilts we're gonna have build your own um we're gonna have custom exclusives that i designed jocasta new saber uh we're gonna have jocasta new new Ooh, we're gonna, wow. we're gonna have everybody dude jocasta um, nala say have yeah. you um have you cracked the flight sabers yet or is that coming at a different time yeah <laughs> The helicopter lightsabers? Yeah, I mean, you know, if I'm going to get one, you know. 
Yeah. Well, no balls that be... they didn't do that in live action, by the way. I'll, once oh, the God, full yeah. site's available, I'll be sending all my friends sabers. <laughs> Uh, so if you want to do a promo, cool. You don't have to, but um, yeah, Ryan, you get one, whatever you want. Uh, Ooh, Mauler, man. I'm gonna send you one as well. You already bought one, but I'm gonna send you another one. I want that Count Dooku hilt. Mm. I want Jacosta Nunu. <laughs> I want the Jaja hilt. Ooh, look at that. He's so cool. I saw Paradox in chat says, "Uh oh, for Doom Part Two, sounds like Last Jedi taking place minutes after Force Awakens. Instant turnoff. What? What? Listen." So the, <laughs> do you know what else? Do you know what else like, takes place right after the first one? Fucking two towers. Uh, also, just in general, the adaptation is of a book called Dune. It is one single book. Part one covers about the first half of the book. Part two covers the second half of the same book. So <laughs> it makes sense for it to take place right after. Um, so I don't think it should be a turnoff to you. Uh, just in general. <laughs> Ryan not every not everything has to be compared to Last Jedi. Ryan and Mahler should design their own hilts. That's actually funny you say that. It's a plan that I've I've had in mind for a while. Is once mm. everything's fully operational, that we'll have uh, exclusive runs of you know like Mahler's design, like a Mahler exclusive or something like that, and uh, like a Theory That'd Savers cool. Mahler exclusive, and like a Ryan one, and you know whatever. I else. want the back end of my lightsaber to look like this for personal reasons. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. yeah I mean, right. hey, we could. If that's what you want, you know, we already had a dildo saber, so now we're gonna do the the inverse, I guess. Yeah. Um so yeah, no, uh Tyrone Magnus send him one. He's excited for it. Jake the Viking. Um a bunch of other people. So we're gonna have a lot of ideas. A lot of ideas. So, nice. Yeah. yeah. Hail the Star Grift. I love the combo you have. Nothing but good vibes and interesting opinions. My birthday is tomorrow. Bad Batch doesn't compare to 2003 Clone Wars. No, we're all going to play 2003 Clone Wars, though, right? Battlefront 2. To 2005. Oh, the, you I'm down. The, the new yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Fuck I'm yeah. Down. Are you kidding me? Dude, Battlefront 2 is yeah. probably my Dude, favorite Star Wars we are, game. Yeah, we're, it's 64 yeah. players online. I can't wait. I'm going to be playing the thing, streaming every single night. It's going to be amazing. Do you prefer one or two? I like two. I played two way more. So I didn't have a PlayStation 2. I had a PlayStation 1. So whenever I would play it, it would just be at either like EB Games or at friends' houses at the odd often time. But I, I loved the game. I got obsessed with two. Yeah. I wish I had a PlayStation 2. But now is my what time campaign, to make up. man. There's so much content in the Galactic Conquest, but the campaign is like... It's Literally so just the voiceover is... Yeah. Uh, the clone voiceovers so explaining yeah. the campaign across the galaxy and like very subtly, like the shit and how they felt about and, the Jedi yeah, and shit. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. I know. It's so good. Why can't well, they like, just and, remake it? Yeah. You could, and, and like even parts of the gameplay, right? Like, whereas where you're the last reinforcement, you've got to sabotage like some building and then get a command post. And if you do it, you gain another 15, you know, supports. Like, this shit could just be made into a TV show easily. Yeah. Wait, is. It's PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, right? Are they all cross-gen? And Nintendo, but I don't know what the cross-platform looks like. I, I don't uh, know if there's any cross-platform play, so I'm oh, not sure. I wish it was cross-platform on Someone PC. in chat said it will be, so we shall see. Chat, can you confirm if it's going to be cross on everything? Because that would be amazing. If it's on PC, I mean, you're all fucking dead. Like, it's, you're, it's game over for everybody. <laughs> Unless you're on my team. Because uh, we got... I literally spent my whole life playing JK2. So, kind of a big deal. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I guess you could say things are getting pretty serious. Yeah, there's going to be a lot more people playing this than the Suicide Squad. Oof, you that's know what dead. I am playing the shit out of is Helldivers 2. I've been playing that, yeah. I've heard a Dude, lot of people playing that. I, obsessed. It's so good. So enjoyable. <clears throat> I love the uh, the world in Helldivers too. That's another thing. I mean, Starship Troopers on steroids, basically. It is, yeah. Xbox and and PlayStation get crossplay. Hmm. Yeah, I've been streaming every night on um, Theories Arcade, playing Helldivers too. So if you guys want to head over there, and Mauler, we, we should link up. Um. I fucking I don't I, with all the streams of mine. Maybe not then, dude. 
I have such shit time for playing games. It sucks. Like, and most of the time when I'm playing games, I'm usually trying to watch videos that I've got to keep up to date with. If you know what I mean. I kind of do that with TV shows because I gotta, you yeah. know, make sure I catch everything. Yeah, I'm just enjoying my time playing playing games. Fuck it. Uh, I haven't played, played Palfrey two. I, okay? I haven't played video games like actual video games in months. The only mm. thing I'm the only thing yeah. I'm playing right now is a mobile video game called Hogwarts Mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd lose my mind if I don't get to play video games after like a few weeks. So, like, oh, I gotta, dude, I, gotta shoot well, I lost my mind last week. So. It's been months, dude. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, it's been months for me. And then finally, this game came out, and I'm like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Holy shit, I'm addicted. What's up, Lord Vader? So hyped for OG Battlefronts. Good luck advancing on me in the Renvar caves. Let me JK one and two are my favorite games of all time. Hype for what well, we got to team up. So we're gonna be making a team here uh, on the channel, and then we'll all. Mm -hmm. destroy the opposition. What's up, fellas? Hey, Theory, what platform will you be playing Battlefront Classic Collection on? Not sure if crossplay will be a thing. So if it's not on PC with crossplay, then I'll be do doing it on PS5. Yeah, I've I've been like trying to look at the chat to see what they're saying. <laughs> it's all different. People are like, yeah, 100% yeah, crossplay. No, only PlayStation and Xbox crossplay. No, only PlayStation and PC. Yeah, uh, I've seen a lot of different shit. The one thing that I can almost guarantee Nintendo Switch probably won't be included in that. <laughs> That's about the only. Don't buy it Sadly. on Switch. Sadly. Um, do you guys think Star Wars Outlaws will be a good game? It's made by Ubisoft and is open world. Also, Theory, your sabers are amazing. Thank you. Thank you, dude. Yeah, we're uh, about to launch in... I mean, we had a huge meeting yesterday, and I'm very excited to show you guys everything with TheorySabers.com. Uh, did you guys think Outlaws will be a good game? I'm not looking forward to it. My instinct says no. I have not seen. I, I haven't really paid attention to too much of it in terms of the the marketing surrounding or any of the, like the gameplay things they've dropped. Yeah. I saw that first trailer, and I will. I'll see how it feels when it actually comes out, and people. I start hearing people talk about it, but yeah. I'm just. Yeah. It's not something that inherently excites me. Yeah, I'm not crazy about it. I mean, it's. Um... I think one thing that I thought was cool in the initial trailers was when they showed the transition between taking off and like getting into orbit and like getting into space quickly. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that that was kind of unique in terms yeah. of something yeah. we haven't seen a ton of, like that kind of fluid transition between atmosphere and space and like maybe right into a battle or something. Yeah, um, I agree. That's something new, but yeah. Other than that, yeah. I, I didn't take too much from the trailer. Other than yeah, I get it. I want this chick to be Han Solo. Cool. Theory looks like the kid who played Aang in the live action Avatar The Last Airbender movie. <laughs> I did see that. Fast <laughs> fast through the chat. What the fuck? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> well, he's I don't even know the name of the actor. <laughs> uh, let's be real. The clone in the tank will be Ray's father. That'll be them explaining that. Oh, and Snoke will ultimately be the Sabiath for Days of Film. You have blinders <laughs> over your eyes. No, Bro. I don't have blinders over my eyes at all. The the Snoke will ultimately be Sabiath in Dave's film is something I haven't even thought about. Mm -mm. Um, Me neither. But what if he's uh, not like an old, decrepit piece of shit? What if he's, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I didn't even think of that. That actually would be. It, Sabiath wasn't like, he was old, but he certainly wasn't decrepit. Um, oh, wow. Here we go. Like he was. Here we go. Here's what's going to happen. Yeah, it's, it could be Snoke. Him and Luke fight. Luke fucks him up. And then there's going to be some sort of explanation why Luke is hiding on an island. Well, there you go. We Maybe. The, the reason he's hiding on an island would be well after that, right? Because that would have to be after he's already, like, tried to... Well, not tried to, but thought temporarily for a moment about striking down his uh, nephew. His fucking nephew, yeah. I was gonna um, say they've already provided why he was on that island by TLJ. Yeah, but but well, they're they're doing they're trying to fix everything. But he also had a bad breakup in the Dave Filoni movie with somebody, and that that's that'll go fear, further to like so wait, his wait, wait, psyche, wait. his mental state. They're trying to fix everything. Just out of curiosity, what would be one example of them trying to fix things? Uh, well, fix is is you know I'm being generous with the word um, fix in the sense of like. You know what? What can we do from here? I think with Luke, 
the only thing really is to is to kind of be like, well, look, um, he went to the island because they were going to clone him or something like that, or like they got a sample of his hand and they tested it, and it's the same thing as Omega, but maybe even better. It binds to Palpatine, so they were going to make a cloned Luke <laughs> and then have Palpatine go into it, and it would be like game over for the galaxy. Do so he read, had to go and hide or some shit. Do you read the the user? <laughs> do you read the user? For this super chat. What? Where? The user name for the super chat. Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's not that bad. No, it's not. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I didn't even think of that, man. That's actually a really good theory. <laughs> so shout out to Darth Vader's burnt bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he wearing a dress? I am your mother. It's like an apron. And he's and he's got a duster. All right. Yeah, he's cleaning. Cool. The most threatening hemlock will be uh, will be is when he tells Omega Santa Claus isn't canon. Andor's prison arc was way better than this. This was lame. You're going to catch a fucking disagreement from me. The prison arc in Andor was fucking baller. Yeah. Well, Aunt Mahler loves Andor. I do. How do you how do you deal with that? So like let's say there's a lot of people that like talk shit about all of us, right? But there's a lot of people that talk shit on you and then I would say like Andor fans are like probably sequel fans a lot of them and then they find out that you support Andor and back it up so then are they like fans of you now or like what's the deal one of the funniest examples of something like that happening was um obviously like a a huge part of my career at this point is shitting all over the MCU right like every single entry almost Zack Snyder's uh the Snyder Cut comes out I make a video shitting all over that and then I guess shit on Twitter and stuff and loads of people like I fucking hate MCU shills and I was sitting there like, what the fuck? I'm like I, I get hatred every day from MCU fans. Like, what the fuck? This uh, people perceive you in whatever way they want, right? Like, in the same vein, a lot of people are like, why does Mola hate everything Disney Star Wars? Like, he's got a huge bias for it. And I'm always just like, Andal, man, it's got to counter that every time. Right. Um, but you are right. There's probably a cross section that matches in in there that way, like a Venn diagram. Um, you know. Yeah, and uh, how do I deal with it? It's just I, I, it's always going to be in like the arguments. I've got huge breakdowns with people about like the nature of the writing in the sequels versus Andor or something like that. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, to be fair, I don't even even you know this, but Andor came out. I watched episodes one, two, three, and was like, eh. And I didn't watch the rest of it. It was only my audience oh, constantly sending messages saying you should fucking watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. And I finally did with my friends, and then we were like, whoa. Um, we were, we were very impressed by the time we got to the end of it. Then we were like, "Shit, that was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be." So, what I guess I'm saying is, I was poised against it, and it mm. still won me over. Okay. Someone says, "How are sequel fans and or fans? How did you come up with that conclusion?" Well, I basically came up with that conclusion by uh, the level of intolerance of and or fans, um, in parallel with in congruency with the <laughs> level of intolerance with sequel fans for anyone else's opinions that differ. Um, I don't find that that's the same with prequel fans or original trilogy fans. I mean, in fact, I think original trilogy trilogy fans don't really care about anyone else's opinions. They're just like, yeah, whatever, cool. Um, I thought you would go in the direction of the a lot of people who just sort of like whatever Star Wars new stuff comes out. So a lot of them are going to like the sequels and and or and Kenobi and Boba Fett. You know, like they'll just be like, yeah, woohoo, new Star Wars. Yeah, that that's what I call like the more so. Yeah, it's it's that's part of it too but i think it's just the level of intolerance that i've seen online it's the, the twitter crew of regular people that are just uh yeah once again intolerant of anyone else's opinions um that's what i find to kind of group them all together otherwise i don't actually have any sort of data that puts if you're an andor fan you must be a sequel fan well i'm a unique breed oh, you are a unique i'm breed. part of the bad batch you see yeah you are <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clone Force 99. Your tech. Uh, who would Mauler? Who would we all be? I think Mauler would be. I'd be Omega, obviously. Nah. Uh, fuck, Ryan's got to be Crosshair. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. You probably. Probably tech, yeah. Yeah. Most likely. <laughs> Love how Theory overlooked that racist super chat from last week where the dude called Reva Darth Shaniqua. Not cool, bro. He should have been banned. Do the right thing, Theory. No one deserves that. 
All right, here we go again. Oh. What would you like me to do? You know, this it's not the first one. It's not the last one. It would be, you know, I just really hope that the worst thing in the world would be for you to have like a Darth Shaniqua parody account that then super chatted. I don't know what we would do about that. That'd be the yeah. worst thing never happened in history. So I'm, I mean, is I hope that we can protect you, Mr. Jazz 212. The yeah, problem you know, here is I don't know if that's a troll or not because it's kind of funny, but it's also like, wait, they might be serious. I, that's why I don't know what I'm supposed I, to say about I, it. I don't know. You know, I, I see things all the time online, whether it's about me or whatever. You just, uh, you develop the same sort of way of dealing with all of it is that you just ignore it and let it move on. Otherwise, if you deal with every single comment or whatever, you block them or you, st it, you'll have no life. You deal with it the same way. You just, okay, ignore it. That's it. I accept all super chats, even the ones I don't agree with. Well, yeah, that's because Ryan's the most tolerant out of all of us, I would say. He's um, progressive in that way. He's, he's I accepting. am. There's a fan edit of A New Hope where the Death Star's lasers are visually ignited on the outside a half second before blowing up. Pretty cool. Fan edit. Okay. I guess I mean because like the it starts up, you get to see it sort of visually before it explodes. You know? Yeah. Sheev talks has an excellent two-hour video on the Clone Wars. I gay actor Michael Douglas highly recommend. <laughs> well, thank thank you, Michael Douglas. Gay actor Michael Douglas. Thank you, gay actor Michael du Michael Douglas. How's your wife? <laughs> She's gay. <laughs> Uh, on a random note, we have two Titans releasing this week, Dune 2 and Jave Clavel's Shogun on TV. Oh, shit, really? I wonder if any of you are going to talk about that one. Yeah, so I'm actually going to revamp the Movie Bros channel. It's just going to be, I don't know, Movie Bro or Movie Theory or something. <laughs> theory Reviews. I can just review everything. Games, movies. Just fun shit I like to watch or do. Um, yeah. I have heard about Shogun, but I, I don't even know like where it's Aaron. So I don't know where I can watch it. I don't know. I'm sure Mahler will be talking about Dune too. Um, I mean, it depends. I'll watch it. It depends on if I see like viability because like I don't have a huge passion for Dune. Uh, and then I don't know if my co-host on EFAT will or not. It's always dependent on that sort of thing. I think you should watch it. Just because I'm, I'm definitely gonna watch it. It's just how much I'll care about Dune as a story to sort of break down. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dude. Gay actor Michael Douglas. That's right. Uh, hey, Mauler, my favorite Bond villain is also Alex Trebek. Goldeneye. Um, rest in peace. <laughs> rest in peace. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. What do you mean? Good if movie. it's actually Alex Trebek and not Alex Trevelyan. Yeah, no, I, I, I'll drink his, sorry, I should explain the context. I'll drink his ketchup. I was trying to remember his name, but I said Alex Trebek. <laughs> then uh, Drinker was like, Trevelyan. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old Sean Bean. <laughs> Sean Bean? Yeah, yeah, he played, yeah, so he played that was Alex Trevelyan, yeah. 006. I want a Palpatine smack scene where he does his Revenge of the Sith noises during the Force penetration. <laughs> All right, John this theory. Thank you so much. I just Ryan, like thoughts. Revenge of the Sith noises. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be the closed caption. It says Revenge of the Sith Force noises. <laughs> hey, Ryan, are you going to, what's it called? Uh, I think Comic-Con Dallas or something. Fan Expo Dallas. Fan Expo Dallas, yeah. Um, I don't really currently have any plans to. Um, I don't think so, but I don't really know. Sometime in and then June there was another one, at, I think Cosmic Con or something in, in, in Texas. I think San Antonio. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have any plans for that one right now. Uh, Fan Expo Dallas. Yeah, I was meaning to ask you. Oh, June 7th to the 9th. Oh, hey, that'd be fun. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know about that one for sure. I know I'm going to be in Vegas in April. Uh, that's the next thing I'm doing. And then, Oh, right. Yeah, and then other than that, okay. I'm not sure about the rest of the year. Okay, cool. Anybody from t Texas here? Mahler is. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Project Necromancer is Imperial Coffee. 
I do. Hey, doesn't Gary have coffee now? Uh, Gary works with Geek Grind, hmm. um, and he's got a couple like special blends with them. Yeah, awesome. Is that a new thing? Um, like a uh, fairly recent, like two years. So. Oh shit. Okay, cool. Good for him. Yeah, I didn't know. I, was... I don't think it's not audience... like his coffee company or anything. It's just like uh, he they... works together with them. Yeah, they started working with us a long time ago. And Geek Grind Coffee. Dope. I don't think the audience for Acolyte exists. The High Republic books don't sell. Yeah. I don't think so either, man. Hey, what do I know? The Acolyte is going to make Echo look good. Echo? Well, hold on there. Echo? Talk about the Marvel series, Echo. Oh. Okay. You might not have heard of it. No. Nobody. Neither, neither did the lead actress. It literally, yeah, it can't make Echo look good. Nothing can make Echo look good because nobody knows what Echo is anymore. It's already gone. They'll be like, what? What to Willow 2? Willow. The TV show? Season yeah, 2? Yeah, why'd they delete it? Uh, because the first season was so fucking horrific <laughs> that it was less expensive for them to just delete it from the platform uh, than it was to keep it up. <laughs> it was shocking. Star Wars is already in trouble. What happens if Acolyte is bad? Then I feel like the brand is just too damaged. Is Star Wars only good with Lucas? I think Star Wars is only good with Lucas and some fans. Honestly, I don't even know that Acolyte being bad is going to change anything for Star Wars' current reputation. I don't think it'll change anything. If it's good, it'll help a little bit. But if it's bad, I don't think it's going to... You can't get worse than what they did with the sequels. It just doesn't... You know, and then doubling Recovering down with, from that is incredibly difficult. Yeah. Well, and then Boba Fett and Obi Wan. I mean, mm -hmm. it's literally the biggest nails in the coffin. I think there's one thing left that they could probably destroy, and that would be like almost impossible. I think to to really come back from that, even if you release really good stuff, would probably have to be destroyed Boba Fett. They destroyed Kenobi. They destroyed Luke. Han and Leia are gone. Han and Leia are gone. Han's a loser vader and obi-wan like prequel era and ot era kind of like, yoda. there's always more damage you can deal to him yeah yoda could be if destroyed. you damage yoda if you damage yoda um say goodbye to your franchise <laughs> yeah that's the last straw i mean i will say i feel like it's already done like yeah. you know if there would because you know if acolyte were amazing i don't think it would make a difference either it would help uh, i don't even know how much it would help a little bit. Hey, anything no, it, good at this point. So if Acolyte was amazing and did well and was well received, it could actually be a game changer because it would be maybe enough to convince them that they can tell stories, even though this one is tangentially connected to right. like leading up to the prequels or whatever. Yeah, outside. It could convince them that they don't need to stay in the OT prequel era and like use those characters or whatever, they could actually yeah. go back a thousand years and go forward a thousand years. They could tell stories in the galaxy without yeah. feeling the need to connect them to those things. Right. Um, so I, I do think if it was like really successful, that might be a positive thing. But well, yeah, what, I, what I'm yeah. saying is it wouldn't change much for the world's perception of Star Wars as like an IP and it's like, do you really think like the Star Wars core fandom going to be like, well, Acolyte was really good. So now I have hope for Star Wars again. It's like, I don't think so. No, I don't. There'll think be so. a certain percentage of people on Twitter that say that. But yeah, other than that, no. Yeah, we'll, we'll say that about Acolyte anyway. I think True. it'll give them hope that that there's potential to create some really cool shit outside of the Skywalker saga, which is honestly, I'd rather they just do that. Like go old republic you know go far outside of the horrible sequel trilogy um if you're going to do anything within the prequels what you did with luke uh, with uh anakin and ahsoka in the clone wars give us a whole entire season of that live action give us stories that we haven't gotten before uh do a live action of son of dathomir i'm down with that there's a lot they could do uh, just depends what they do, what they choose, and where in the timeline. I know Ryan really wants an Omega trilogy. Yeah, of course. Really oh, brutal, oh, like yeah. Ahsoka in the Clone Wars, and uh, and Dawson not it. I don't think it has anything to do with her. Like uh, to do with the writing. Yeah. the 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 problem is that almost every person acts like Rosaria Dawson in like the Mandoverse in terms of their delivery and shit. Um, 
they so the, this could be because we know she's capable so they need a director who pushes her to be like a character and then we need ryan this good as well i wonder how much of it is like working in the volume like i have a lot of questions about that now certainly there's characters who speak like they're in a cult because they're literally are supposed to be in a cult right mm -hmm. the delivery for characters like the armor and din Djarin, yeah like it makes sense but all of a sudden when you get deliveries from rosario from even katie sackoff at times from whatever the fuck sabine's character's name is it's like what it, this is just like the template for in the mandoverse this is how we speak to each other now um which makes me think it's more than just uh mm -hmm. like happenstance mm -hmm. connecting thread what's up desmond first time i get to catch a stargrift episode live mauler just curious who your top three favorite lord of the rings characters are also curious about theory and ryan's top three favorites as well love you guys thanks bro um all right, I guess I'll go first. So my number one is Boromir. I love that character. He's like, he's just one of my favorites in general. And then past him, it gets a little bit more complicated because there's a couple I love. Like Sam would be super high scoring. Theoden would be super high scoring. And there's a couple of others, I think, that would start to sort of scratch at, at getting close. But I th think that would be my choices for top three. I, would, I wouldn't exactly know how I'd rank them. Other than Boromir being number one. So Boromir, Theoden, and Sam. I, I like Faramir a lot. Um, I, I don't know if I can... Are we talking about books or are we talking about like movies? Just do it all. Up to you. Um, I would put Gimli up there. I like fucking Gimli. And fuck, we'll do Gandalf too. Oh I'm, yeah, Gandalf's good. I'm not like a massive, I love the freaking movies and I really like the books. I'm not like a massive Lord of the Rings fan though. Um, I really like Fromir, uh, Trindamir, and Vladimir. I think those are my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Lord of the Rings that well. I love the movies, but I don't really uh, know much about it at all. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to say Legolas, probably Aragorn, and um, Saruman. Came close to being a League of Legends top three with Trindamir and uh, <laughs> Vladimir. <me. laughs> yeah, yeah, both. Oh, cool. <laughs> Valentine is Anakin Vader. Why the hell does he need Grogu or Amiga's blood? Uh, I guess he's not a um, not a candidate. Perhaps. Remember, Moff Gideon made a better clone than Pal. Yeah, what the? What is that shit, man? How does he make like 10 clones of himself and they're all force sensitive? We're seeing, we, they're going to come back. Like fucking Gideon is so coming back every season. Doesn't make He'll be sense. back with an even bigger army at the end of season four. It's going to be like a million of them. My clones! Oh, wait, hold on. And then oh. together they're going to force bring down a planet on Mando. And Mando's going to have to shoot the planet so that it doesn't blow him up. It's going to be great. Guys, My I, clones! I... <laughs> I can't believe it. This is like, I'm triggered right now. I'm like freaking out. I'm having a, an emotional meltdown. Darth Shaniqua just super chatted. And I don't really know how to feel about that. <laughs> Dude. I, I think weird. you should delete your channel. It's just the right thing to do. Yeah, I Protect guess everyone. Because someone super chatted that. I'm rogue. Yeah. Super yeah. chats. Yeah. Just being real. Yeah. It's real talk here, Star Grift. All you right, we're all, bad, in, we're all in. We're all in. Bad. We're all in for the grift. But if you say, if you make a joke like that, that's just over the line. Okay. You got a bad batch in chat. That's what I'm learning. That's right. And you're all wreckers. We all talk about Floney makes it seem like JJ is the goat. Floney what? hasn't done any damage to the lore. He's better than anyone right now. KK is his boss. I agree with that. <laughs> don't put me in that. What the hell do you mean? What? These guys don't like um, uh, Wait, I, you I, agree I, that it makes it seem like we think JJ is the goat? No, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> God damn. That doesn't He's make any the sense. patron Satan of the, doesn't like, make any sense. destroying Star Wars. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. J.J. Abrams has been involved in two things that were very bad for Star Wars. Dave Filoni has been involved in two decades worth of things that have been very bad for Star Wars, in my opinion. 
As for uh, Filoni hasn't done any damage to the Lord, do you agree with that? I I couldn't disagree he, less. He has, yeah, he has. Uh, did, he has. He's sure. done serious damage, and then he's better than anyone right now. Um, I still think Gilroy is better than Filoni easily. And then that's only including the people who are currently working on Star Wars. If we expand it out, there's going to be shit tons of people. Thanks, Baba. This this one actually makes sense. <laughs> 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 yeah, Wrecker is J. Yeah, that's for sure. I like how we've like Hunter is so broken up over what's happened to Omega that Wrecker is like the voice of logic and reason. Where Hunter's like, "We have to go now. Omega's waited so long; she can't wait one more day." And Wrecker's like, "Last time we went somewhere, it did not work out very well." Re Hunter, think about this. And I Hunter's did have like, in my notes. It's good they have a retard character for the exposition. <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, some of this dialogue wouldn't work if not for him being retarded. It's like, whoa, bro. Batcher and Wreck are gonna be best friends now. Hell now yeah, Batcha, part of the bad batch. Smaller. Why you always flick Zippo? I'll do it because they requested it now. That's how it works. There you go. Oh, do you smoke? No, I just like the zipper layer. And I like setting things on fire. Nice. That's... Yeah. There you go. Sick. Oh, speaking of smoking, interesting. Psychopath. What? Both thinks Cal Kestis will show up in the Babetch. In this final season? Um... Uh, I don't... I don't know about that. Um, when's the t when would be the timeline of Bad Batch compared to when Cal Kestis is active? Isn't Cal Kestis younger during the time of Bad Batch? Like he'd be still be a pretty young kid at this point, right? Mm, yep. I, I mean, young in terms of like he'd be like twelve or thirteen. Yeah, it's um, five years before Fallen Order. Yeah. So. So he's a kid. And and if he did appear, he would just be as some random like construction worker or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, I don't I don't think there's too much of a chance. We'll no. put it that way. But I wouldn't it's... put it past Filoni. All right. Is the Dune popcorn bucket large enough to hide a mouse trap in? I've got a friend who I know I can get good with that. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Yes. Disney loves to reinvent the wheel with Star Wars. Do you think the black trooper in episode three at 121 is tech? Oh yeah, I was thinking about that. You know, it kind of looks like it kind of reminded me of uh Kane in, in his uh Jedi. What's it? Inquisitor? I don't, why, I don't know why it reminded me of Kane. Yeah. No idea. Um I mean, you're gonna have a, a lot of explaining to do how tech survived. Like he fell down a like that's more than like a mall fall <laughs> you know what i mean um, spider-man got him or something that could make sense <laughs> yeah everybody gets one um <laughs> maybe you guys should watch the old republic trailer to see what great star wars could be i do like bb though yeah those are awesome those are great mall are you seen those okay. yeah i'm pretty sure yeah hey that's what vader 2 and 3 are gonna look like chat Last week, I got Bad Batch and Resistance mixed up. Filoni left the Bad Batch after the first episode. He was loosely involved with R. Sorry about that, lads. You're welcome. Loosely well, involved I, with R? Resistance. Um, yeah. I, I I think that he's just as involved with Bad Batch as he like was. An, like Again, I, I'm not saying that Filoni is writing every episode of Bad Batch or anything like that, but in terms mm -hmm. of the, the structure, I, again... It's this whole thing. It's like he's attached as the creator. He's attached as the he's the first name that appears in the fucking credits, right? Um, right. Like this is Filoni's thing. Text he works. He works with. I, I think uh, who is it? Brad Rao, who's the supervising director of this. Like he's, they're working hand in hand. Like come on. Why do we need the M? M count. I don't think you want to say M count. <laughs> somehow palpatine returned why can't they just decanonize the sequels is it really that hard remove all three from disney plus stop selling the dvds besides ego why not it's shit 
you have to remember they don't think that they're like uh oh, precious great. sequels all right now, not only do they not think that but also it's not just the sequels now think about all the storytelling that's been done in large part by people like favreau and filoni that are trying to connect things to the sequels if you're going to decanonize things you have to take it back to 2012 Yep. Right. And you have to decanonize everything. I don't care if it's something you like. I don't care if you like Rogue One. I don't care if you like Andor. If you make a decision like that, it can't just be piecemeal. It has to be fucking everything that yep. they've created. Mm -hmm. And that is a it's a much bigger decision than people make it out to be. Mm -hmm. And um, it, as much as I dislike virtually everything that's been made, say you love Rebels and Rebels means a lot to you. Um, or even if you hate a lot of other stuff, how are you going to feel if they say, hey, you know that thing you invested in, you know that thing you really like, you know those characters you you know, watched in that hard time in your life and it, got, it made you get through it? Fuck you. We're ripping that out. Yeah, that It doesn't count anymore. That's what happened to me and a lot of other people in the expanded universe. Yeah. Right? So it's not, it's not an easy decision for a company to make. And if it, they were to do it, they would have to make that decision. It couldn't be piecemealed out. Right. Nothing in Star Wars will change until DEI gets destroyed. Acolyte will be nothing but Karens and Shaniquas with lightsabers hard pass. Okay, well, I don't think so. And also, let's not get racist here. Well, I mean, Andor kicks ass as far as I'm concerned, so it's not impossible for Disney to make things that are interesting. They just, As far as I'm concerned, the same problem has existed for a while. they got to get the right creators. Um, people Look. who really, really care about Star Wars. I think it really comes down to the vision and who writes it. So I personally think Tales of the Jedi was amazing. I thought Mando season one and two were great. Um, what else? I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. So I mean, there is like they could make really great stuff, but they're just getting idiots to write it. Or too many cooks in the kitchen. I don't really know what's going on, but it's just, it's not consistent. Mahler equals annoying. He obviously wants the future of Star Wars to be some Andor Game of Thrones level writing with Shakespearean dialogue. George's Star Wars wasn't even as good as that. More of a film critic rather than a Star Wars fan, in my opinion. Okay. What do you guys reckon? Um, um, well, obviously, I think you're annoying as fuck. So I 100%, <laughs> I 100 agree with Mr. Jazz. You know, I was listen. I was kind of shaky on Mr. Jazz when he got very upset about the 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 Reva comment, but now I'm on his side. Obviously, Maul is annoying as shit. Oh, is this the same guy? I don't read names, dude. I don't remember names. Mr. Jazz, too. You obviously don't read names because you had Darth Vader's burned asshole up on the screen. Yeah, for I don't. 10 I, minutes. I just. <laughs> um, he obviously wants future stars to be some Andor Game of Thrones level writing, especially Game of Thrones season eight. Obviously, yes. Shakespearean dialogue. Um, <laughs> George's Star Wars wasn't even as good as that. More of a film critic than a Star think Wars fan. Mahler is extremely intellectual. Uh, the way he sees movies is very, uh, what's the word, fragmented, like broken down. Like he can pick apart many moments. The way I look at movies is like not so much about necessarily um, exposition as much as I look at it like how it made me feel in the end. And how the character arcs were in in terms of the main characters, and that's I kind of just focus on certain aspects of film. I think Mahler sees literally everything and takes a magnifying glass to all of it, and that's what makes him a really good. I wouldn't say film critic, film examiner. So I think if you combine that with someone who's a major Star Wars fan, then you're going to get someone who's very analytical with um, their takes. Um. There's so many characters that I love in media that are just absolute retards. So I don't know this whole like Shakespearean dialogue like, thing. Like <laughs> Wrecker? Yeah, he's my favorite. But, you know, like Drax, Guardians, like he's probably my favorite Guardian at his best. He's literally uh, fucking Wrecker. Yeah, but his dialogue's better. <laughs> Wrecker's dialogue is exposition most of the time. Yeah, or I like pretty colors or something, but... And then, then as for whether or not I'm a Star Wars fan, like I give a shit to justify whether or not I'm a fan to random people. I'm just yeah. like, that's that's great, man. I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll hopefully Thanks. satisfy your requirements someday. Yeah, yeah. To people, they can think what they want. We don't have to live up to people's expectations of what a fan is or isn't. Everyone has different uh, qual qualifications of fandom, I suppose. 
Hey Siri, love everything you do. Probably not the best place to ask, but are you recruiting any developers for the team? Would be a dream to work with you. Uh, yeah, for Theory Sabers, yes, we are. But um, yeah, you can reach out over DM on Theory Sabers Instagram. Um, more about that later. But yeah, we're we're expanding very fast. Mahler, when is the Destiny prequels versus sequels rematch debate happening? Uh, I don't know. Probably never. He because he would he wouldn't agree to it until he rewatches them, and he's never going to rewatch them. For reference, he, he uh, Destiny said like on a stream the the sequels are way better than the prequels. Do you want to know what his reasoning was? Mm. He said that the sequels achieved their goals better than the prequels achieved their goals. And what are their goals? The the prequels were to tell the story of Anakin, like to give context to the OT and the character, while the sequel's goal was to be like an entertaining action thing. Um, was it just was that. this like an actual debate or just like an offhand remark that was like oh, in the middle dude, of something else? It was now? this. You is can find it. It's YouTuber? Adam and Sitch's like I think it was their hundredth episode or two hundred. I can't remember. It was like an anniversary thing. He was there. I was driven so mad because. No offense to Destiny, all right? Or maybe offense. A lot of political streamers are terrible with media because they they don't know what they're dealing with when they go up against like hyper autistic media fans. They're sitting there like fucking. They're, they're, look, they're looking at what's going on in the Middle East, right? And they like go watch a movie. But yeah, they go out and they're, they're looking on the the entire history of the conflict uh, between the Palestinians and Israelis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then they're like, you know, they throw a thing about a movie and it's like, oh, and you crack your knuckles. Like, I know everything about this movie. Let's go. And it was a it was a big call with loads of people. So Desi would like say something really fucking stupid about the prequels or the sequels. And I'd be like, oh, yes. OK, so I try to explain it. And then someone else would just cut in with like, I don't agree with that because blah, blah, blah. And he would keep like bouncing between 10 different people. And I couldn't lock him down into anything. So I was like, OK one day we could talk about it but yeah he's very convinced that the prequels are much worse than the sequels which i think is a wild take i can't conclude in any way shape or form that the prequels are worse than the sequels they just the sequels are just catastrophic so you uh you've had destiny on <clears throat> fat before was it um what was that like asian multiverse movie uh, uh it, everything, everything all... anywhere all at once or whatever yeah yeah you had him on to talk about that right yeah, well, obviously that when he requires he sees that movie, and he that's his favorite movie of all time. So, yeah, not yeah. to convince him to do that. But if you want to do the prequel versus sequel, he has to watch all six. You know. Yeah. That's, you know, yeah. And that means <laughs> watching the I'd, sequels, which is rough. I'd yeah. happily debate debate anybody on the prequels or sequels. That'd be fun. We should uh, we should get like a three v three or something. We could be the prequels and yeah, a team of sequels. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd actually be really entertaining. Um. I ain't funny. showing up for a Ray movie. I don't care if it's dope. <laughs> Can you imagine if it was? <laughs> What's up, guys? What would, make, what would make the Ray movie dope? Yeah, that's. I didn't even want to go there. I was just like, yeah, there's nothing that's going to If Palpatine it. shows up again, that'd be pretty cool, right? That'd be pretty cool. Awesome if he did. If he killed her, come on, theory. <laughs> if like, like, yeah, her, like, if he killed her, yeah. No, if he just like <laughs> showed up, no, if he just showed up again, what if Ventress was there? That'd be cool. We could have Vader show up. What if they brought Maul Fuck back? Off. <laughs> I'm just saying, like that'd be better than probably what they're doing, right? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> what I love is that you were so on board with a Ray movie where she gets killed straight away. <laughs> well, yeah. Why, why, well, the rest. Yep. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Baba, you are so here. Oh wait, I didn't read this one. I just finished Obi Wan Qui Gon Master and Apprentice novel today. Have you guys read it? So how'd you like it? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool seeing Obi-Wan study as much as he did. I don't know how I feel about all the prophecy shit that was in there. Of course, tying into the sequels, there was like a prophecy about Kylo. Um, but also it really drove home the fact that Obi-Wan just really is not very talented. And it's his sheer discipline to train that made him as gifted as he is. Not even gifted, just as good as he is. And I love the part where Qui-Gon was like <laughs> thinking to himself, he was like, you know, when I was his age, I was able to do so much more shit than he can. And um, just as the overall dynamic between Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan and how Qui-Gon was going to be on the council, but chose to train Obi-Wan. Uh, they changed that a little bit from what was before, I believe. But yeah, it was a good book. It's fun. Yeah, I... I didn't. That's new canon shit. I didn't read it. I can't read. 
Yeah, Molly can't read. You can't read? Nope. You're dyslexic? He doesn't have the capacity. <laughs> Actually, I'm possibly dyslexic, but no, I can't read. Oh, fair enough. They're going to give Luke's post-Episode 6 story to Rey. Yeah, can't wait to see her rebuild the Jedi Order. Yeah, successfully, unlike him. Creamy sheep. Hmm. What's up, dude? The Death Star is nearly... <laughs> 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 Love the stream tonight. Quite funny. Yeah, yeah, sometimes they're different. Man. Mm. Um, was Palpatine in the Bad Batch or the other way? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I guess we're getting to that. Yeah, the, all right. Mm -hmm. Dune Part 2 is absolutely incredible. I'll rather watch Palpatine OnlyFans instead of The Last Jedi. Childhood Died by Lost Souls is our theme song. Yeah, Idra Darren was there to get me horny. Would Creamed Sheev be the type to have the alien prisoners with jobs for the bedroom fun, or is he too xenophobic like Ryan? Peace be upon him. Um... I see Palpatine more as like a purist. Um, I think if, yeah, I think if Palpatine was going to like actually have a child with someone, he would care a lot about that. But I think he would also think that pussy's pussy and he'd just fuck. <laughs> I have many law things to cite as to <laughs> supporting this opinion. Okay. Like there's so many scenes and references that you just know he's uh Palpatine fucks. That's what I have to say about that. Mm -hmm. I can't believe he was asked that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. Just saying. Like, do y'all think the mod support will be easier to make and download in the new Battlefront as a console looser? I am dumb when it comes to that stuff. Oh, the mod support's going to be pretty cool. Um, I mean, you know, it's hard to say how difficult it'll be. Hopefully it's simplistic. Would it be murder? Don't mind me. I'm just enjoying a chocolate malt while we're listening to Mauler Mauling. Love this trio. Mm. Yeah, spam three if you guys love the trio here. I mean, I know you do. I just want engagement. So, and hit the like button. Go give him another option. Though. Spam one if you despise it. No, fuck yeah. that. That's engagement theory. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. You're right. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Spam one if you don't like us. Damn. Dude, you're, you know how to play the game. I didn't even think of that. Gonna sound weird, but I think Disney Star Wars' biggest failure is Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, the movies and shows suck for the most part, but we're not gonna be able to take our kids there and say, this is Star Wars, with a straight face. Uh, yeah. They definitely shit the bed on that one. Just a rock. Yeah, for sure. Yuri's gay. All right. Ryan is a fig and mauler like men. <laughs> All right. And that's from Macaque. With a picture of Obama <laughs> putting in a rainbow dildo in his mouth. If Bad Batch has a bad or even mediocre ending, I will commit drink and drink. Well, don't, don't do, do that. that fun of the chaos don't because it's that. going to be bad. It's uh, going to be bad. So don't don't commit to that now. You're not. They ready. put it in the name. Come on. Let, at least this one's titled correctly. You never know. YouTube might hit you up, and be like, "You encouraged this," and it's like, oh, "Fuck." Can you read, Mala? Can you read that with a heavy New New Zealand accent? Hunter. Teak, Wrecker, Echo, Crosshair. <laughs> Crosshair. <laughs> Crosshair. Crosshair. I don't care, Crosshair. You saw what Tick did. Didn't Bad Batch already show the chain codes are already implemented into the Empire on large scale? So why the data pad? What do you mean? It's up to you guys. I don't know about that. The well, I I don't know how the chain code would mean you don't need a data pad. Maybe maybe what? I missed something. I I I kind of like honestly, season two of Bad Batch. I kind of skimmed over the first parts of season two and watched like the last four episodes. Like I watched all those beginning to end. But the first, I don't know, 10 or so, I kind of skimmed through them. So I don't know. Not sure. Yeah, I don't remember what right, then. it's about this chain code. Um, I'm not exactly sure where the, what they're saying. 
God damn it, more. Why didn't you watch all three episodes, three seasons? I totally like, did, though. Like, I, I don't understand why chain codes would... I, I, I don't know how that would replace a data pad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't really like, understand. We even heard about chain code in, like, uh, remember when Boba Fett's, like, talking about his chain code and, like, shows that that armor belongs to him and shit? Like, chain codes are, like, some kind of DNA markers or whatever, right? With some, like, identification thing. I don't know how that would replace a data pad. Maybe I don't understand the question. Hmm. 03 Clone Wars versus 08 Clone Wars. Fordo over Rex. 03 Grievous over 08 Grievous. Yeah, 03 Grievous is badass, dude. Mm. You'll see that soon. Mola. I just joined, but I get the impression that the boys did not love the Bad Batch. <laughs> I loved it. Oh, he sent it twice. Thank you, sir. Oh, he's one of your folk. He is? He's using pounds. DBTX. Oh. oh, yeah, there you go. Hey, Theory, I've watched your videos since 2016, but recently it was difficult given how positive you seemed about recent Star Wars. Now I understand the context, and I truly apologize for not noticing. But recently it was difficult given how positive you seemed? I don't think I've seen very positive about recent Star Wars, have I? I mean, a lot of people have been accusing you of the reverse, haven't they? Yeah. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> can you show theory the quantum of solus song mauler i can send it to him after the once we're over the stream i guess what eu story would you like to tell ryan um well i've, I've always thought that um i would love an animated new jedi order series an animated yuzong vong war i think that'd be the best way to tell the story just because of the scale because of the amount of warriors involved both on the jedi and the yuzong vong side and kind of the scale of some of those battles um, that's always something I thought would be really cool. And I don't think you could really, really commit to doing it as long form of a TV series that would do it justice. But I think you could do it animated. So that's what I'd like to see. Use Ong Vong Invasion, New Jedi Order. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we did this one. I tried, yeah. Disney already has a Star Wars kids show, Young Jedi Academy. Any show premiering at 3 a.m. EST, ain't no kids show. Be better, Bad Batch. Be well, boys. Well, I mean, it's just the premiere time. I wouldn't really say that's for kids or not kids. Um, yeah, it doesn't, in a way, it doesn't really work that way anymore for TV, right? Because, like, Disney Plus would be a main place to watch it, and that just means it's available. Everyone's yeah. going to be watching it at different times. It's kind of just more so the watch parties that made it, like, a midnight thing. I'm sure, like it's generally directed at a younger audience. I'm sure that's the case, but like I just, yeah. I just want to fight for. There's so much kids' content that when I was watching it as a kid and an adult, that I'm like, God, this shit's good, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think Hemlock gave Nala say the full lab access because his arrogance led him to believe that he broke her with the destruction of Camino and having Omega. Omega is overlooked because she's just a hostage with no real value. Well, they could always lie to her and be like, we have her in captivity and we're keeping her fucking alive and, you know, unless you do this. I also don't think that makes much sense. Like, the they would give him full lab access because you believe that she will absolutely follow every order when you threaten what is apparently going to be the person that would convince her to do the job she doesn't want to do. As in, surely she will try to devise a plan that could help either her or both her and Omega escape and giving full lab access slash lab access. She has the power to release prison cells. Yeah. Like, why Why would you give... What could possibly be the reason to give her that kind of power? There's just no reason. No, there isn't. Not whatsoever. Thanks, Ross. The old Battlefront games or on newer gens, though? Yeah. Of course. Fuck yeah. Ryan didn't even mention Palpatine's son, third eye on the back of his head that has... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, Jedi <laughs> Prince is a fucking wild series. Yeah. Who? <laughs> the 28 Days Later sequel? Oh, who's excited? Yeah, it's 28 years later, 20 right? years later, huh? <laughs> uh, that's weird. That shows up right after. Do you guys think Ray will help fix Star Wars in episode 10? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't Ryan's, think it'll be episode 10, but... Ryan's really looking yeah. forward to it. Vader and Boba... Yeah, but it basically is episode 10, for being real. 
Um, well, Ryan. Ryan's, Ryan's right that it wouldn't be called that, but I'm guessing theory's correct in that that's going to be their we're con- that's that's their like we're continuing the story that you last saw in episode nine. Yep. Yeah. So, <clears throat> like, it would be it would only be episode ten to me. You should only do episode ten if you're doing part of the Skywalker saga, right? Mm-hmm. There's not going to be any Skywalkers involved with that, despite one being named Skywalker. Okay, well, it's kind of a. I'm doing the poll, but it's kind like of I like I don't consider Rogue One episode three and a half. Um, no, but yeah, uh, I don't think anybody really like it. If this Ray movie, I assume, and it won't do this, but I assume they want it to be like a big thing of you know this is the next big bit of lore that enters the Star Wars universe because in the same way that Marvel TV shows only add small significant events, I assume they feel that way about. Star Wars Marvel, you know, like the, the big thing is going to be the big movie that comes out. Everyone's going to have to keep, like, you know, like Mandalorian and Grogu. That movie will probably have bigger events in it than in all three seasons put together. Mm-hmm. Wow, some people are actually choosing Asajj in the Bad Batch. Are you kidding? <laughs> what? Could be a hundred percent. What the hell? Vader and Boba. You guys crazy? Who would choose Asajj and Bad Batch would beat Vader and Boba Fett? Oh, depends whatever. how badly written is it. <laughs> oh, and we will ever see founders of the lightsaber. I mean, probably in the uh, the new what was the Star Wars uh, movie about the origins or something? Yeah, season three, episode one, eighteen. Season three, episode three, one eighteen, implying limping assassin <laughs> clone, something or nothing. That would be this exact same time. Well, almost. The other person said 121. Uh, the same one who said they think it was tech. Hmm. Interesting. Don't forget to blue wrench me, mod me on this channel. Theory bought Helldivers today. Let's get it. What do all the hosts think of the game? I think it's amazing. It's really, 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 really cool. I almost want to see like a TV show in that world. I think it's super fun. That opening cutscene where they like get you into it is so fucking funny. The um, you know, like yeah. the perfect world, and then he's like, the "This could happen to you." And so, what do you do? You join the Hell Divers, that sort of right. thing. And just you know, like when you shoot and shit tons of bugs, and they're just like democracy. Like it's yeah. just fun as fuck. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, fun to play. I haven't played. <sighs> uh, what's up, Mike, dude? Rossi, now modded. Question from the past. Obviously, threes and a four aren't good, but is your grading scales based on the seven being average or five being average out of ten? Discovered all three of you during 2020 peak podcast. Love all. Thanks, Christian. Hey. So I'm, I'm going to explain. So my re- ranking system is really fucking ridiculous, to be honest. Um, so if we were to take the movie The Gladiator, I give that a 10 out of 10. It's my favorite movie of all time. If we're taking Revenge of the Sith, I give it a 10 out of 10. If we were to take Mando Season 2... I'd give it a 10 out of 10, but not compared to Gladiator or Revenge of the Sith. I'm comparing it to Disney Star Wars. I'm not comparing it to the prequel trilogy or anything like that. I'm comparing it to what Disney has done to lead us into this kind of corner and what they could possibly do to make it better, to give us a bit of an escape. I don't really see it as like, oh yeah, you know, if I give something a 10 for Disney Star Wars then that means, you know, it's on par with the Gladiator and Revenge of the Sith and everything else that's literally so perfect. If they release, like, ten amazing things in a row, better than Mandalorian Season 2, would you then, in retrospect, change your ranking of Mandalorian Season 2 or, like, it's it's rated down to, like, an 8 or something? Mm. Yeah, that'd be reasonable. Yeah, because, you know, we're coming from The Last Jedi. That was the first cameo, real cameo of a Jedi that we got. Uh, and Luke... You know, I thought my favorite guy was a bitch. I thought he was gone, and uh, he wasn't. And it, it hit me at an emotional time in my life, and I freaking bawled. So you know, we'll nice. say um, follow up <clears throat> question: If the next ten things they come out with were even worse than you could have possibly fucking imagined, would you retroactively make Mandalorian season two a fifteen on your scale? No. Okay. No, tens tens the max. And um, doesn't that mean then that on your scale, that's particularly harsh on? Bad Batch, it's a four by Disney's standards. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's now leading into the sequels. I don't like that. Someone said, "Why you got a complicated ten out of ten scale?" <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, I know. Yeah, you're so, look, look, like, look. If you want me to re to review everything on a, like a a fixed scale of like you know gladiators up here, what things will get like a five. Everything will get like a five or a six. It's funny you say that because if if I go next and then Ryan, like uh, I've tried to sort of make mine as consistent as possible across the board for storytelling assessments. It's a better so. way to do it. Yeah. I run two so I at the it. same time, uh, f for lack of a better term, without bias, my desperation to just assess, uh, 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 analyze it based on its cause and effect. So it'll go from top I like your Freudian, to... your Freudian slip of assassinate that thing. <laughs> well, see, you had TLJ on my mind, so I can assassinate that film. Mm -hmm, yeah. But yeah, if, if 10 out of 10 would be like a... Um, uh, I'm not even kidding when I say like you know Blade Runner, Citizen Kane, like these classic films are all incredibly tight. The Thing, Alien, uh, I, I would be here forever if I listed them all. But the, the ten out of tens are going to be stuff that when you analyze it, it's like almost impossible to see any kind of flaw in how things move along. And then zeros, you know, you're looking at like the the quote. I've never given a zero. Zero point five is the lowest I've ever given, and that was to Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry, Multiverse of Madness. That was the zero point five. Yeah. It um. It, that film, the, my video is six hours going over how they've broken continuity like a thousand times in that film. It's it's incredible. You have to try to make it that bad. Right. Point being that um a three or four, then it, it can be okay. Like that could mean something that's pretty damn entertaining. Because the other scale I run then is like the subjective side of how much I enjoy a thing. Like at the top of the scale is is something like you know Lord of the Rings, but also Batman and Robin, where I'm just like entertained immensely by how retarded a thing is and so like, i try to let people know that side as well because i am human so with bad batch it feels like a safe three on both ends i'm not really having any fun i'm kind of like yeah this is something that's happening i can recognize some stuff is happening and then in terms of continuity it's not doing very well either um so in terms of what they're asking i feel like theories is harsher than mine like my three is nicer than his four yeah, mine's yeah, not as so. complex as these gentlemen. I <laughs> give something a rating out of 10 based on how I like feel in the moment. I try to be like somewhat non-biased and admit if, yeah, if I think it, I think it's bad, but still had fun. I'll try to let you know that. Um, but things also do change, you know, sometimes the way you feel immediately coming out of the cinema, like when you haven't had time to digest things, you sleep on it, you think about something, you're like, well, that, that was kind of, kind of feel weird about that now. Like it's things can change nice. after you, after you, you know, rate them initially. Oh yeah, so, that's the problem. I that's the mistake I made with uh, Rise. Came out of that, I'm like, oh, this was a great film because it fixed this and this and this, and it gave Luke his moment. And I'm like, wait, that doesn't make a movie good. It took me a little time to understand that. Wait, what the hell? Theory. I don't think your view and vibe works with Mola. He genuinely hates Ahsoka, for example. I don't it's think true. I hate that, that's why it works with me though, because I love Ahsoka. <laughs> I've uh, I think my big issue with the Soka is I felt nothing. It was like apathetic in that show. I guess yeah. I hate it for not being better. Like it has potential, you know. I hate her. And the well, show. I, I didn't like the last two episodes, but everything building up to that was enjoyable for sure. The first few, um, I mean, I loved seeing Hayden come back, but it wasn't really. Um, they kind of just put him in there, right? It wasn't like it was meaningful of any in any sense in. in any way that makes sense, and then the whole world between worlds, like Jason, Ugh. what's his, what's his name? Jason Sindula. Jason Sindula. Yeah, J Jason. Jason um, the name stolen from yeah, Jason yeah, Solo. Thinking, I'm like, Thank you, cocksucker, not... Dave Filoni. I'm like, there's no way that it's okay, but yeah, and then um, yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to know more about Balin. I thought he was a really well written character. Interesting. Yeah, I just think it's interesting. You, you can't have a good vibe with someone if they don't agree with all of your takes. <laughs> I hate that. I hate everything wrong with the world today. Where do you think Omega and Crosshair jumped to? Perhaps over to Fat Mace? Also, will you have the Dark Saber on your full sight? We will have a a saber that is dark. Mm. I'm going to bring up a video, actually, of me. So I tested all of them. And um, I'll bring up the video. Uh, Ryan, if you could read the next one. I find this video. Who do you guys think would win in a fight? Pain or Asajj Ventress? Pain? Pain. Is, what, what's Pain? Is that Darth Pain or something? 
It's T Pain, I believe. It's not like <laughs> Mole's brother or anything, is it? Yeah, Mole's <laughs> sister. Mole's sister. Uh, yeah, Pain, I believe. Mm. Savage, oppress, and Pain. <laughs> it would work. It would work. I don't. I'm not familiar with who Pain is. Um, Apparently, it's Naruto. Oh, uh, I don't know shit about Naruto. So Naruto. Naruto wins. Yeah, Naruto wins. Hands down. Uh, let me see if I can find where some of this shit is. I don't know exactly where he's at. Let me scroll up. Is this guy's name Sub Zero Bird. And we got a lot of super chats to get to. We do. Um, uh, here we go. Where press <laughs> fucking Sarah looks enormous. <laughs> like the. Yeah. the, the, the so the angle that you're holding that makes it look like you're four feet tall. Like look, <laughs> now it looks like normal now that you're moving it. It's dope. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's the one I gave to Gina. That's pretty. The the pause screen that was on when it started looked like that thing was so fucking big compared to you. <laughs> Shades of Gun Ray. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, oh, Alex Kaiser for five. Who wins? Clone Commandos or Arc Troopers? Love the based stream, boys. Clone, clone, clone Commandos. Leia had a son named Anakin in the EU. Why would she ever name her son after that? Well, after I mean, Anakin of all people. Yeah, so she was, again, this was, she wanted to have someone change that name. You know what I mean? One, she, for like, forgave her father for things that happened and wanted someone to, like, take that name and do good things with it. And that's why she I ended think, up naming Anakin. But it ended up putting, like, a heavy weight on his shoulders. This is something, by the way, the sequels did not do anything with. But knowing Leia's perspective on her father after everything that happened, like, it would have been great to know what her opinion is of the man who basically made it so that, the re rebellion had a chance was the same man who destroyed almost everything. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, her yeah. Parents. Yeah. yeah and like oh. was, you know, was part like tortured her, um, was yep. part, obviously Tarkin was in charge of the space station and everything, but he was part of the mechanism that resulted in not her birth father, but her father, like her family, like being destroyed on Alderaan. Like it would have been There's interesting so much to get her perspective on I mean, that. Leia was not served by the sequels just as much as the other characters weren't. They made her General Leia, and they were really proud of themselves for that, but nothing else happened. Like, for a character. She was just around, pushing buttons and telling people to go places. And then telling Rey how amazing she is. And she's like, yep. What a waste. Do you think Plo Koon is one of the most underrated Jedi yeah. ever? You can. Um... Yeah, he's probably so. not talked about super much. Yeah. And thanks, Mike, for being a member for 45 months. Saber promos are required. Yeah. Contract. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Theorysabers.com. Um, it's top shelf nerds. He does, he's doing all the marketing. So I sent him over 40 sabers and we're having amazing photos. And you guys will see. Uh, Ryan, please tell me you asked the theater staff for extra butter right before you left with your dune bucket. Um, nah, he just nah I should have. I should have. <laughs> well, when they asked you for like how much corn, how much butter, you should have just said just butter. Yeah, extra butter. No corn. Just butter. Just bucket no of popcorn. Butter. What are your thoughts on Star Wars The Old Republic? Do you think it ruined KOTOR 1 and 2, especially the characters? No, I don't. Um, I, I, I get... There's a lot of people that are split about it, about like, especially how Revan goes out and the Revan novel and what Swotor means for that. But I like the overall story about what happened to Revan and Malak when they went and found the Emperor, what happened to them when they came back. I'm fine with it. As I see it, I'm happy with one to six plus Rogue One and Clone Wars. Rest is use Star Wars stories, ideas to me. I don't need anything more. Love in the pot. Oh, thanks, Mikhail. Yeah, it's, it's a normal perspective. A lot of people. <laughs> the, 
My favorite part of Battlefront 2 was unlocking the secret weapons by completing feats during a match. The burst rifle melts people. Oh, yeah, they're talking about, like, if you get, like, kill streaks and stuff, your gun would get stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah. A few more weeks. Fucking amazing. You know, like, if you go on the, you know, like, the space battles, if you hang out on the enemy ship, which the AI wasn't exactly great, so you can mow down, like, hundreds, and then eventually your rifle is just this, like, it's fucking Death Star, basically. Mm. Do you think Luke and Leia were never brought to a doctor in fear of having their blood taken and then recognized as Vader's kids? Uh, it's possible. No. Well, um, I mean, they were I, dealt with medically on the uh, the ship they were born on, right? Yeah. Do you mean like never brought to a doctor in their entire life? On Tatooine, there's going to be plenty of doctors. On his entire life. Yeah, probably. You, could, you could go to doctors on Tatooine without worrying about like their blood getting in the system and being discovered as Skywalkers. Or well, something. I mean, it's, it's Tatooine, first of all, so it's like removed from the Empire. It's the Hutts own it. And then there's Alderaan, which is all royalty, and I'm sure that she would have it done in-house. So it's like... No one's gonna get. <laughs> no one's. No one's gonna get any information on her. And like, the, uh, like I, I guess if, if there was any suspicion out there, I like I guess there could be. Hey, we gotta track this. But for the in general, nobody really thought anybody was out there. Everyone else thought Anakin Skywalker was dead. I, I don't really see a reason why they would be too worried about that. Yeah. Amanda Stenberg says the idea of accolades to honor the ethos of Star Wars and ideas around the Force and also challenge them, hopefully, harmonic. Yeah, well, we'll see. We shall see. Literally. How do you guys feel about Zahn's Luke spelling and character? Hold, hold on. Plague Creation says Tatooine had a stomach transplant shop. That's true. Tatooine was pretty advanced. You could, you could literally die there, and they could just give you an artificial stomach, and you'd be fine. Listen, no, okay, they regretted killing what was her name? Fennec? Ming Na like, Wen's wait. character, oh, yeah, Fennec right, Shan. Right. We and changed our mind, she's alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty advanced, yeah. How do you guys feel about Zahn's Luke spelling and character? Um, I don't mind the, the clones, you know, having extra, like essentially extra characters in their names. That's how they were kind of delineated, like Joris Sabaoth, yeah. um, cool. and Luke. Obviously, there's not too much to Luke's character he's a clone of luke skywalker um he's literally just meant to to fight so my friend is related to cameron monaghan nice cameron riley monaghan uses full fucking name yeah right. like cool. a serial killer <laughs> all right john wayne gacy mm. sweet clown mm. um why did luke throw lightsaber doesn't seem like some what do you mean? Why did he throw it? Do they mean TLJ? In, in Last or... Jedi. Oh, why did he throw it away? No shit. For, <laughs> no because shit it, because it, it was funny. Yeah, because uh, what does it get rid of your past? Let it die if you have to. Mm -hmm. Let the past die. Right, whatever. As far as terrible villains go, Grand Moff Esposito and Thrawn really raised the bar. Who is the worst villain in all of Star Wars? <sighs> worst villain. Grand Moff Esposito. <laughs> He's pretty bad. He's pretty bad, dude. He's yeah. Um, he was good in season one, and then just became kind of. Ridiculous. Was he? Do you remember the finale for season one? What they did? Yeah, just... he just grabbed the dark saber and took it out. No, I'm talking about like the strategy when they were like, okay, send in some guys, wait for them, wait, send oh, in yeah. some more guys, send in flamethrower guy, and then like yeah. they lost. That yeah. was catastrophic yeah it's because gina fucked them all up you're right the plot did allow her to fuck them all up uh yeah i thought it would be i mean i had different theories from like oh maybe vader trained this guy I mean, he's like in case he... anyone's forgotten that's that's the same scene where if you remember uh ig11 Drives in with Baby Yoda attached right. to him and just starts shooting all the stormtroopers. Who, who's I the that was awesome? Who's the villain in what? Book of? <laughs> Man, I love that. That was cool. Who's the villain? Let's pass over that. Who's the villain <laughs> in Book of Boba Fett? Uh, it was the that was the Syndicate. Yeah, the Pike Syndicate. 
Which would have been awesome if Maul came in because he. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Hates those guys. Yeah, it would have been great if nine years after. Oh uh, wait, it was a new hope years. if if Maul was still alive. <laughs> oh yeah, it was after. I would love that. that. You could do it Ghost Maul. No, no. Well, it could have been the. Uh... Oh, you're right. It was a fucking. I didn't pay much attention. I mean, I never watched it again. Yeah, yeah like I, I remember the fight, but I kind of like don't remember like who the who the antagonists were in that show. Like <laughs> it after was all Cad this time, Bain. it was uh, fucking... Cad Bane Pikes. What's her name? Kills them all in like a after credit scene. <laughs> like they, they survived the onslaught. Yeah. Shand, yeah, she kills them all. Um, someone says Admiral Trench. Snoke has the potential to be a very nasty villain, but he was killed off so stupid. Yeah, he did. He had the potential. They destroyed him. That Andy Circus playing him. What a waste. Oh, he was amazing. Anyways. What's up, boys? Just got my Dark Apprentice Profi Saber. Can you make a video on the pixel choices? The Profi is confusing AF. Yeah, you got the most elaborate, illustrious, confusing board, but you can also do the most with it. Um, so right now we're actually having a, Top Shelf Nerds is actually uh, meeting up with Blue Mamba and all these names. Meeting up with Carter, who is literally a whiz on every single board. And we're having professional videos done for you guys to know how to use your saber, uh, the differences between the boards, as well as how to program different sound fonts into your saber if you so wish. Uh, we're going to have step-by-step -step guides. We're going to have video guides and all that. That's Everything's coming. I don't do anything half-assed. Believe me, this site will be the game changer for all of the Sabre community and uh, Sabre enthusiasts. You're talking to a man who does everything full ass, all right? Yeah. yeah. Not half ass. Exactly. Ass. Full ass. And right. balls. Random question. Why not Le Chief as the best Bond mm. villain? Oh, he was. Trevelyan and Sanchez are tied for second, and then Telly Savalas Blofeld, for me at least. I like Le Chief. Yeah, it's a fair pick. Le Chief was great. The chief is cool because he's like he's smart, he's brutal, he's got a weird disfigurement. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, all yeah. the things that <laughs> like you kind of require for like yeah, yeah, yeah. For Bond villains. He, he cried blood, right? That was cried, cried blood, blood. Yeah, but I also liked, I liked his story that he's basically like an accountant for all these yeah. fucking people, and he lost yeah. all the fucking money and needs to win yeah. it back. Yeah, you know. Um, and he lost it on that big investment that he had on the fucking jet that he was going to explode and like, you know, whatever was going to happen to the stock afterwards. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I, I like the idea of like, that's what his fucking role was. And that's yeah. why he was there. And that's why Bond was there. The whole thing's awesome. And he's in panic mode after he, after he fucking loses. Yeah. Yeah. Who are those guys that were trying to kill him? I didn't understand that. Just like his, the people that so he was basically a banker for yeah. a bunch of criminals yeah right like he was the investment guy and he lost all their fucking money so now right. they were after him they wanted him dead because he lost their fucking money so they sent some dudes after him yeah i always thought the name blofeld was just kind of funny they were kind of come up with a different is. name it probably wasn't as funny in 1960 or whatever but anyone know when gina's lawsuit is supposed to happen i'm not sure i mean he just know. recently got filed so these things take time was Darth Sidious not speaking with the authority as all the Dark Lords of the Sith when he was knighting Anakin as his apprentice? Hence why his voice was changed. Just my thoughts. Oh, that's an interesting theory. I think he's just channeling the dark side. I think he I was think just, they just wanted to make him monstery. Fucking explode after, you know. He's been his hiding his side. true nature. Yeah, and like being so patient without any sort of signs of him you know, having any ulterior motives or anything like that with Anakin for 20 years. Holy shit. Wow. Well, and this really is the, for, for 10 years. This is the culmination of a thousand years of Sith planning and strategy and the dark side rising and like to, to ultimately this yeah. fucking blow against the Jedi that's like happening right yeah. then. Yeah. It's, it's just a thousand like, years. So it's like probably all that dark side energy. He's just like, he's just yeah. Like so it makes him sound orgasmic. Yeah. <laughs> He's Acolyte getting off to it. It's going to be a woke nightmare of a show. We'll sink Star Wars to low, new lows. Well, we'll see. Mm. I hope not. 
Would you have stopped watching new Star Wars projects if you didn't have channels where you review and discuss them as Filoni? No, I wouldn't. No, I'd be watching them all the time. Uh, I would be more select them. about it. Like, I'd probably see the new Ray movie because I'd want to see what they're up to, but I wouldn't be watching, like, Bad Batch. I wouldn't have watched the first three episodes of Bad Batch the first week they released. I, I, I might have gone and checked it some, some other time, but... I'm, like, you know, halfway. I'd be on I, I I care a lot about Star Wars still, even though it's been fucking really shitty. Yeah, I mean, we all still care about it. We just, we don't want it to fail. We just don't think that the leadership there is... They really know what they're doing. Especially Dave. I think Dave knows what he's doing. No. I was speaking for myself. I know. Yoda was a she in canon, like clownfish? What? Like a clownfish changes their gender or something? I don't know. I get the impression that there is nothing Disney could do to impress Ryan and Mahler. So I guess no new Star Wars. Please what? Me from you can't beat me up for liking an Andor and then simultaneously say there's nothing I like from Star Wars. Pick what one. are you talking about? Uh, I think they... Is there anything that could impress you guys? Literally Andor. I was impressed with Andor. I think Andor is better than like any anything else that they've made, certainly. Um, I don't know if I was like... I was impressed by the craftsmanship uh, of Andor, even yeah. if I'm not totally down with the story or interested in the story. Yeah. Um, again, I, what I've said for a long time is I think that they need to go way ahead and way back, tell stories from that era. You know what would you know in, be impressive to me? If you could create characters that stand on their own without having to rely on nostalgia, whether that's uh, a fucking sound of a TIE fighter or the name of somebody you know, or some stupid dead character that gets resurrected because, oh my God, right? Like, mm. that, that, that would impress me if you could create characters that stand on their own without having to rely on nostalgia in the Star Wars universe. I'd love that. It would be cool. There's so many things I could do that I would like, but we ain't got it just yet. With a lot I, of yeah, it. I don't know if you have the people there that can tell the stories, but... Now that I think of it, yeah, dialogue in Mandoverse so flat and bad acting. Whereas OT dialogue was unique and from a galaxy far, far away, at least it tried to feel different. Example, Luke's dialogue in A New Hope. Like, obviously, look at some of the prequels and some of the dialogue and the exchanges there. There is a little bit of, um, like, it does feel a little almost uh, theater-esque at times. You know what I mean? With that type of nice delivery. way to put it. Yeah, like almost like you're watching a play. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some of it is supposed to be some sort of like Shakespearean tragedy. And I think that's like the vibe they were going for with the prequels, especially in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the this is different. This is like fucking robotic. Like everyone sounds everyone sounds like they're really happy to be at work. I don't know. <laughs> Remember well, it's when a fucked up time in the Empire, so I mean I mean, when that guy's son was taken in the fourth episode of season three, and it was like, you only found that out when you finally got like slightly near him. And I remember losing my mind. I was like, you had that connection the entire episode. And you didn't use it. Like having him talk about it, having him relate to Mando about fatherhood, doing anything to bind this guy. And then that guy gives up his life for all of them at the end of the season. I was like, you could have made it so much more meaningful but you did nothing like the instead you have them fight on that weird spaceship th boat thing like remember they fought over like chess or whatever the fuck <laughs> and he was like no 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 uh, no <laughs> yeah. brothers let us put down our swords let us not <laughs> i also liked in that was that the same episode where like that random fucking pterodactyl comes and steals a kid yeah. and they're like fuck. this is this is as far as we ever make it our jetpacks run out of fuel <laughs> every time it happens this is as far as we get it's so like, fucking stupid, it's like, what the fuck what do you mean how often does this happen why haven't you actually taken care of the problem and why do you keep going the fuck outside like you guys retarded how did the mandalorian culture survive this long <laughs> <laughs> true shin how do you see i could get behind that Talking about power levels in Star Wars, a question for Ryan in theory. Can Velcorion work in a mainline film since he's so powerful? Well, oh, yeah, sure. I mean, they just dumb him down. I, I, I th well, I think you could. It doesn't work because it compressed the timeline. But if you go back 3,000 fucking years, 4,000 years to that timeline, 
Um, you know, I, I think that you can do different things with the force that maybe in, in either explain it away that, you know, these practices were lost or, or things like that over time. I'll try to show some of that. I, like, I think it, you, I think you could do it, but you are talking about a extremely powerful being. Brian, I, I still really want to see you make legends content, man. Legends lore. Mm. Yeah. Just simple shit. Like who's Valkorion? Who's Arkin? Who's Treya? Who's Sion? Yeah. I mean, no one watches that shit anymore, but at least, you know, there's, there's a few people that will really respect it and enjoy it. That's true. If, if I ever get any, you know... Why not? You know, just turn I get any extra. On. If I get any extra... T well, one, that's not like a turn a camera on thing. That's like something you want to, one, make sure you do your research on, get all the facts right, and all that shit. So that's not well, just to turn the camera on and spiel. Well, no, but, I mean, like, you could even just, like, sh talk about him like you do here. Or whoever here be like, oh, okay, he was this guy, this and this. And if you want to know more about him, let me know. I can make him like a full extensive lore video. Yeah. Be fun. I, I, I think a lot of people, would, I think a lot of people would like it. And if I ever get a, a little more yeah. time and make my process that I do a little more streamlined, it, it's probably something I would really like to do. That shit doesn't make money. No, it doesn't. No. Anytime I make a fan fiction or a uh, lore video now, man, nobody gives a shit. It's not like it was several years ago. No one cares. It's all about more so news and uh, the state of Star Wars and like, oh, they did this, they did, they did that. It's That's what people want to watch nowadays. It's not, no one gives a flying fuck about lore or comics or fan fictions. It's, there's like a select few, but I would say, you know, where in the old days I would make a video on lore, it would get like, you know, 100,000 views in a few hours. Man, that, that will probably won't even break like 30 nowadays. No one cares. It's a combination of no one cares and also the mark is just more saturated you know what i mean it's like because now that more people have gotten into doing youtube and doing those types of videos now you're competing against things that might have a million and a half views from three years ago do you know what i mean oh like my old stuff yeah like your old stuff or, or other things or whatever you know what i mean yeah. so it's just the market is more saturated when it comes to stuff like that hmm never looked at it that way but yeah yeah it, it's a combination you know the, the interest level and the saturation hmm. like if i put out i don't know if i put out a video right now of how to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich if i was the first person to fucking do that it might get a lot of fucking hits but if people have been doing it for including myself for 10 years now it's like i would really argue if you were one of the first to do that everyone's gonna still come back to watch how you do it because like they might not like the way that someone else makes a peanut butter sandwich or their camera or their background or their voice or whatever. So it's, there's so many different things. Yeah, like but they're probably going to find, but they're in the algorithm. They're probably going to find that one from 10 years ago that has 30 million views. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Instead of the one you just released. So the one you just, yeah. Right. I don't know. I don't know anything about YouTube. It's just me guessing. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, my old videos, like, there's 3,000, over almost 3,100 of them. They all still, every day, there's just, on every video, there's people just still just watching. So, yeah, they're watching. They're there. They're just, it's not as much as like Battlefront 2 remake, you know, stuff like that. And I really blame that on Disney, to be honest. I think if they really stuck to making the, the sequels good, people would be so heavily invested in what um, they used to be when the sequels were coming out. Here I'll do movie bros with you. It would be fun to see a movie on Friday or Sunday, review it together. Like, <laughs> oh, that sounds very fun, but I'm going to work alone for now. Appreciate it. Where are we going to see when the Star Wars comes? What? Such a weirdly phrased sentence. Uh. <laughs> Big fan. Who would win in a fight? Prime Robert Baratheon or Damon Blackfire? Ooh. That's, tough. that's from game of thrones right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Dude, bobby b like prime bobby b before he got fat as shit with that fucking warhammer yeah he ain't to be fucked with mm. that's one that could go like both ways but um uh, i think a lot of people would go with damon though and hey um john I, yeah i would recommend making your own channel man if that's what you want to do if you want to see a movie on Friday and then Sunday review it. To, I mean, yeah, I'd like to work alone right now. So, and, and yeah, I don't know what 
Like, j just to be clear, like, that's not Damon Targaryen. That's Damon Blackfire that they're talking about in that. Yeah. Not, not Damon Targaryen that you saw from House of the Dragon for anybody that was interested in that question. Theory, now Mahler is watching Clone Wars, you should have a group watch of Mahler's videos over the sequels. You did a 24-hour stream. Yeah, I was going to say. He Again, put 18, aside a whole fucking week 18 for 18-month stream, yeah. Just release one a week, Mahler. Okay. Yeah, why not? Disney Films president leaving Disney. I was thinking, what if they pulled a Jurassic Park? Meaning, what if they clone a character from the past, Revan Bain? Uh, at this point, I just feel like they'll ruin him too. Now you're coming around, theory. I love that answer. That's a good one. Um, I agree. If they brought any character like that back, whether they were dead, whether it was the real them or a clone, man, that'd be rough. That's not great storytelling. Yeah, because you like to play with it. Like a I mean, it's pretty story. fun. It's like known for its you know sound. Yeah. 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 What is the one thing you would change that you think would have the most positive impact on the sequels? Side note, the dynamic of 2D3 is awesome. I love these guys. No, I, I can't wait to hang out with them. Have dinner. Well, I hung out with Ryan, but... That's true. We didn't eat anything, though. I drank <laughs> a lot. Um, I think that... I, I don't know if, like, one thing, but I, I guess the, the one change I would make for the sequels is ensuring that... Luke, Han, and Leia are still like together, still respected, still important, and still like working together. Like yeah. that, that to me, probably, regardless of whatever other changes you make or anything else you do, I think if you start off there from that perspective, not to say they're perfect, not to say they wouldn't have any problems, but if you mm -hmm. start off from there, I think everything else in the sequels becomes one, a better story to tell, and it's more easily accepted by a lot of different people. I agree with that. Exactly. Right. Um, What's up, John? Oh, Molly, yeah, please. Well, just uh, it, it's like uh, uh, short of decanonizing the whole thing in terms of one change, like you know what Ryan just said is pretty much where I would want to go with it. But if they said like, no, that's too many changes, you're gonna get one. Like probably saving Luke is the main one. Yeah. And don't cut him off from the force. Stupid. He cut him. Ready for off. the disaster that? Oh, dude, dude, we got a uh, release date, isn't it? Ah, oh, fucking June. June fifth. Crazy. I've already got it marked in Google, my Google calendar. I forgot to make a video on that. Damn it. Yeah, June 5th, man. That's nuts. It's uh, very bold of them going up against House of the Dragon. Can't wait. <laughs> Me and Maul are going to be busy. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing House of the Dragon reviews, Acolyte reviews. That's good, Ooh. man. Good. Hell yeah. We're going to be busy. Hey guys, love your podcast. I'm a big OT fan and want to read more of Luke's adventures after Return of the Jedi with Abeloth. Any books you guys would recommend? Much love from New Zealand. We'll be buying Maul Saber soon. Right on, Michael. And uh, for all of you that want to buy a Saber soon, full site will be up probably end of March, mid-March, end of March. And then we're going to have a massive, gigantic, ridiculous sale from May the 4th. So just keep that in mind for now. Cool. Uh, Ryan, you take this one, bro. Yeah, so the specific book series that deals with Abeloth would be the Fate of the Jedi series. It's a nine-book series that takes place like 35 to 40 years after uh, A New Hope. Um, if you just hop in there, you're probably going to have no idea what the fuck is going on. Honestly, there's like a lot of books before that. But <laughs> if you're like interested specifically in the Abeloth storyline, the Fate of the Jedi series is where that takes place. There you go, Michael. Unfortunately, if if I was to tell you what you need to read to have full understanding, I would say the Thrawn trilogy, the Jedi Apprentice trilogy, um, probably a little bit of Young Jedi Knight series, the New Jedi Order, which is a 19 book series, um, uh, the Swarm War trilogy, which is three books, Legacy of the Force, which is a nine book series, and then you top into Fate of the Jedi. That would probably get you like the bare minimum to understand kind of what's going on. Crazy. Uh, what do you guys think of the sequel trilogy where they use the theory that Jar Jar was a secret Sith Lord the whole time? Um, that no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh man. Um, like we're almost it. at two thousand likes. If everyone could hit the like button once, that'd be great. Don't hit it twice because that'll unlike. But appreciate you. It couldn't happen to Ryan because the Star Wars EU was never canon to begin with. Oof. 
Uh, not according to Lucasfilm. So. What are your thoughts on the mass shadow generator Mauler? Right now, yeah. So a mass shadow generator is something that interdictor cruisers used. It basically generated a gravity field that was big enough to replicate replicate that of like a planet so that people could not jump into hyperspace while being within that gravity well. Um, now, this oh, is I remember. Before, now, now, this is before they did all the like fucking Star Wars or the, all the like the fucking light speed skipping bullshit from Revenge of the Sith or not Revenge of the Sith from Rise of Skywalker where they're like literally coming into hyperspace in the middle of a fucking planet. But that's the gist is that um, it would generate a gravity field so that you could not uh, go to hyperspace. You could trap ships and Maul or not Maul. Fuck. Thrawn actually used that with like extreme preciseness during his war with the New Republic. Because what that he, sounds because interesting. What he, because what he started using it for, because what for a long time it was just used for. Um, them to trap people, go in space lanes, have an interdictor fire up its gravity wells. So you're like catching ships coming out of hyperspace, enemy ships, fucking trapping them there, whatever. Um, or to just spring traps, things like that. What he started using them for was he would jump a small fleet, put a couple interdictors in and like position them precisely. And then he would jump his fleet in right where the mass shadow started so he could have these precise insane coordinated dropping out of hyperspace with your fleet already deployed already ready to go and he fucked people up like that which is really cool but that's a mass shadow generator how do you feel about that molar <laughs> Yeah, I said that sounds interesting. Like, um, I actually prefer advancements or new technology that's essentially really strong versions of something that's already possible. Just developments over time in that way, not something that's just so new and insane that couldn't possibly make any sense whatsoever. That sounds like it might work. I probably need to see everything in context, you know. But it, I find it more interesting than like hyperspace tracker or kamikaze that destroys an entire fleet. Six years ago, Dave Floney debuted The World Between the Worlds on Rebels. Yeah, I'm not Thanks, a fan. Dave. If you, if you someone had a theory, theory saber against your throat and you had to smash one of these, all right, bro, I ain't picking any of this shit. What? You want to have a shit? What? I, I'm, not pick, I'm not playing the game. I'm playing the game. Darth, fuck. I had a conversation with my friend, and he says he wished Count Dooku was in Phantom Menace and see a live-action version for the Tales of the Jedi scene between Qui-Gon and Dooku. Yeah. I mean, if I, I would... Re, if, you know, not that we can now, but redoing the prequels, I would... Uh, I think we talked about this. I would have way more Dooku. Yeah, put him in there somewhere. But he was pretty much gone at that point. But I guess on the outskirts, you'd have it. Well, I, I think you could definitely right if you if you like link it up with Plagueis, um, where you know you can see Dooku and like really the last straw is when for him the last straw is when Qui Gon gets killed. That's like the last straw for him, right? Yeah. It, it is when Qui Gon ends up getting killed. Uh, and that inaction really drives him to become more politically active. Yep. Um, I 100% think you could make room for part of that story <laughs> somewhere, but I don't know. What? <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone said Ryan doesn't have eyebrows. And then I looked and I'm like, oh yeah, what the fuck? It looks like you don't have eyebrows because of the way the light's hitting your face. I have very light eyebrows, it's true. Yeah, but it... <laughs> Fuck, it's funny. Laugh. I'm it is. Old. I mean, it is funny. Whatever, uh, at least you know, uh, we both uh. imagine the two of us put together. It's true. Theory's got like, fucking crazy eyebrows, but he doesn't have any actual hair. We'd look like fucking Caillou. And we would look like that one thing that they created of us with Mahler's mask on us. Oh, oh. Jaundice theory, yeah, great, cool. Baller, what was that fucking uh, that picture you shared in our Discord chat? That was all of us. Is that going to be official art? What was? Oh, that? oh it was. That was horrible. 
It was, oh, it was from Beowin. They do art for uh, EFAP a lot. Yeah, I looked was... horrific. <laughs> you know what? Let me make that the uh, today's. Yeah, you know what? Why not? Oh, God. I, lo I look cool in it. You do look cool. Yeah, we... you're a fucking mask. You're an avatar. Like, theory looks exactly. like he's got Down syndrome. Dude, I look I, like I'm I way older than I, I actually am. I look. You no, do I don't look know old. about that, but I just look, I look like old. a fucking creep. Yeah, I look like a creep. You look like you're from Mesopotamia or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> the deal is like you know. back when it was called that, maybe. Literally, like I, yeah. I look really fucking old. Should we pull that up here? Let me fucking. I'm pull pulling it up. it up right now. I'm adding okay. it to the stream. But you know what? God. Actually, you know what? Actually, I got a good idea. They got my eyebrows though. There you go, boys. Are you pulling it up? Or you? Yeah, it's it's loading. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. nailed it! Right, it's well, like... Let me actually pull it up on top. <laughs> I love your face is just stuck between the three boxes. <laughs> yeah, fuck, dude. Creepy. Creepy. You mean, I, I'll actually screen share it. There it is. Ryan, you look seasoned. You look like you've been tired. through a lot. Yeah, you look, you're like, I'm having a rough go, man. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm kind of feeling that vibe now. So, <laughs> it does kind of feel like me. Full blown. Yeah, like the beard's bigger than it actually is. The beard used yeah. to be that big. I cut it I cut it back a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I just... I mean, but look at how old I look. God Thank you for the effort. Damn. But, I mean, I don't think you really captured our features. Baller looks amazing. Yeah, he looks great as usual. You you look retarded though, theory. Look at look at that. I just look like a creep. I look like I'm a yeah. Fuck. That does look like someone's just depiction of someone that did horrific things. So like that's yeah, a like drawing. A, right. Looks like, like you're on you a know, list somewhere. Like find this guy. Like one. Yeah. Like he's probably got a white van. And... <laughs> like yeah. Like stay away from ice cream shops and yeah. candy shops. Yeah. 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 Ice cream theory. There you go. I think it looks great. And you are both very handsome people uh, that I would happily uh, swipe. What do they do? Swipe left or right? Which one's the accepted one? I don't even think this would be allowed on a dating app. I think it would be <laughs> taken down immediately. Which, like, <laughs> who the fuck is this guy? What has he been through in life? I don't know. Um, thank you, though. Whoever, whoever drew it. The more I look at uh, it, the more I do think I look like that. And it makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wait, let's try to re. Can you put the Pharaoh hat on? Let's try to reenact it here. Hold on. How many super chats we got left? <laughs> a lot. It's, it's not going to fit in three this. Hours. Thing. A lot. All right, hold on. I'll, I'll be Keep reading. All right. <sighs> if Ray wears a string bikini swinging a lightsaber, it would be dope. All right. Yeah, let's add to the misogyny. Great. That's what I really need. Mahler's thoughts on Elden Ring and the shadows of the Erd Tree trailer. Looks cool. Hopefully, it's more than just boss fights that I find like satisfying enough. Uh, <laughs> not to say that I am intending to play it. The story of Elden Ring is fucking baffling to me. Like watching that storyline in the trailer, in terms of like you know, oh, character X will go to place Y. Maybe I was like, I don't fucking know what's even remotely going on. I have to watch a bunch of lore videos, but um, you know, I. I hope it's what the Souls fans are looking for. I guess I'm. Uh, I implied that I was going to play it there. I didn't mean to. What I, What I mean is like I'm. Uh, I'll check it out if uh, people I know, sort of who I trust on sort of Soul stuff, if they say like it's great, then I'll check it out. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like Ryan's dad in the in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> he passed it on. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Oh shit. Wait, hold on. Uh there, now it's accurate. Hold on, put it up. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. uh. Great. 
Oh, well, Ryan can be on the bottom today. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Tired of doing all the work. Switch it around a little bit. Uh, theory, we've seen the Sora AI videos. Might be a great way to make future fan fiction. Yeah, it, it popped up on Instagram. Yeah, I was meaning to check it out. Just... Kale, can you guys start watching the Clone Wars this week? I think we're going to get through the Bad Batch and then afterwards, probably Clone Wars. Isn't it Acolyte up to that? We got a month. Yeah, okay. It was June 5th, you said, Ryan? June 5th, yeah. Yeah, literally like a month. If Disney were smart, they'd drop all the Disney Plus products, projects and hire Dennis Villeneuve to make a Kotor movie trilogy. No more or less focus on gaming until then. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be sure. I'd, I would love for Denis Villeneuve to... I, 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 would, I would absolutely watch a Star Wars movie from him. As long as it yeah. was something that he like was passionate about and wanted to do and not something that they were just like throwing at him and trying to get him to do this because of whatever reason. And says, thank you for your service, Ryan. Love the show, guys. Best part of my week lately, says Foster. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, hard disagree with Andor fans, sequel fans. Andor feels gritty, immersive, mature, natural connection to the OTPT, steer story plot. Sequels, not that I think Andor fans are actually hate the DT most. I was a little confused there. A little bit. I like steer story. Yeah, what does that mean? S tier. Okay, great. Steer story. Nice. Um, yeah, well, I, I don't know. I just think in, not in terms of the actual product. I just think in terms of the uh, disagreeableness that you, you, you know. That whole bricks and screws thing was absolutely ridiculous, just like the uh, misogyny thing. But I mean, whatever. You know, I'm making a simple point that literally looks like there are bricks that you'd find on a construction site instead of nice smooth sandstone that was in the prequel trilogy um and like like what the fuck is wrong with these andor fans why are they so butthurt about this it's like one comment you did also say the thing about uh <laughs> cheese and wine and <laughs> which oh yeah yeah, was, yeah, 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 funny. yeah yeah after after the fact for sure yeah 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 because i'm like the fuck is wrong with these people man they can't Take some one guy's opinion. Wait, was that in your? Hold on, was the cheese and wine thing in the uh, the Obi Wan video? I think it was in his video about like how Star Wars is fucked or whatever. Yeah, and I think I took a jab at Andor fans. <laughs> yeah, like they said about their the cheese and wine and their college degrees. <laughs> 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 yeah. We're in a movie reviewers, the critics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They swirl their wine and they snip it and they say, yeah. wow, I was able to do this before a line of dialogue passed. It means this movie's good. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Pretty much. Jason Solo lightsaber for Theory Sabres. Oh, we're going to have some amazing stuff, man. You just wait. I ain't talking about it too much, but I'm just saying. It's... Y'all see. Mahler should eat a cream pie of some kind. I will not leave his closet <laughs> until I see proof. <laughs> On his MySpace page, what the fuck? Gaylord um, Zepikowski. Zip, 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 are we still talking about Palpatine, or what is this? I'm not sure. Know. Code cylinders to my earlier question. Sorry. Oh, Gandalf is the one that asked about the the code uh, data packs and the yeah the data pack. He was talking code. about oh, so code cylinders like their rank cylinders and stuff that they keep in their pocket. Mm -hmm. Um. That would, I 100% agree, you should be able to like open do doors or access things with that. But the data pads to me were much more like you could operate almost anything and with the data. So I don't think that those could replace data pads. But in terms of just access to a door, you're, I think you're certainly right with that part. Some doors. Yeah, I'd be fine with um, data pads, but just, you know, different profiles, different access gives different power, right? Like that's just how anyone would use it. Yeah. Remember when Mando it, season two had the security that was you have to required you have a face? <laughs> you need to prove, yeah, you need to prove your uh, you have a face, not just not like a a face of someone that we know works here, just a face. <laughs> There's been too many faceless men from Game of Thrones that have been getting through here. Slender man walking. All right. Yeah. Favorite Jason Bourne movie? I enjoyed the first one. I don't really remember the others all that much. 
Supremacy At this point, I need to rewatch them. Mm, yeah, I just recently watched the first one. Um, the first one I think is the best, for sure. Like four months ago, five months. Which was worse, Mahler, Deadshot, VA's underacting, or Boomerang VA overacting? Boomerang easily. That shit was grating. I can take people being like boring or whatever, but when you have someone who's just like blah, 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 constantly, it's just like, Ugh. so you really love Omega and Wrecker? Good to know. I mean, the funny thing is, like, they're annoying, but they got nothing on Boomerang's VA. They they yeah. couldn't even get close. Anakin in episode two, he's as wise as Master Yoda and as powerful as Master Windu. Theory. Obi Wan was shit. He just studied a lot. Kidding, guys. Love the show. I mean, it's true. Well, but that those two things could be true in the sense that that's what Anakin thinks of Obi Wan. At the time, you know, I was saying that. Yeah. Well, he was just being nice. Which Star Wars character would each of you cast Arnold? At? Man, I remember that moment too when they were showing trailers of it. But they showed like a sneak peek on some talk show or whatever, and like Anakin was like levitating. The f Dude, it was so fuck. It was so cool. I think that was in like sometime in 2002. It was amazing. Ah. Arnold could probably make a good Jar Jar, I think. Like a different alternate dimension Jar Jar, something like that. What the use of Samis doing? It's perfect, really. Arnold as Jar Jar. I, I mean, that'd be fine with me. <laughs> I think we go pump some iron. Hours behind, but hoping Mahler and Ryan disagree with the title. I know they love it. You got your wish, Bonzo. We loved it. <laughs> I didn't understand Rise of Skywalker because I didn't play Fortnite. <laughs> 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 got my Dune popcorn bucket back from my big bro. He said he left a fat nut in it, but I couldn't find any nuts. I found some... Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> God. Prepare for Gladiator 2. Yeah, you know... My favorite movie. I don't know what they're going to do with it. I hope Ridley Scott still got it. And uh... well, one thing he's got is a budget. They've spent $310 million. <laughs> on so I saw that. Yeah, yeah, they went over budget. By a little well, bit. Yeah. Hey, if anything is to go by on him, like, you know, adding on extra sequels to things that are beloved, like his alien stuff was great, right? Yeah. Like, I, I don't. I really like Gladiator. Um, I don't... I'm familiar with fucking Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Hello. <laughs> well, yeah, like I'm, I'm not I, a I massive like, Alien fan. I thought like I like Prometheus a lot. Oh, I. You didn't, right? Me. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking hate that movie. Yeah. I heard a lot of Alien fans fucking hate that movie. Um, but I don't like. I watched it once, but I'm not. I'm not really into the franchise, so I don't really care. I don't think the Gladiator needs to be a franchise. No shit. Um, so. <laughs> The idea that you're spending $310 million on, that's what I think is the crazy part. I don't mind them wanting to do a Gladiator 2. I get it. I didn't think that there should have been a Top Gun 2. I ended up loving Top Gun Maverick, Fuck you know, 35 good, yeah. years after the fact. Yeah. But there's a difference when you're spending $180 million on a Tom Cruise fucking action flick like that versus $310 million on Gladiator 2 with, like, no returning characters, right? It's like, I, I, I don't... Uh, the uh -huh. only returning one would be um, Lucius's mother. I forgot her name. Well, exciting. Well, what the fuck? No. Lu well, yeah, Lucius could play. He would be literally the right age at this point. Who is the actor who played Lucius? Uh, what's his name? Mm. I don't know. What else has Ridley Scott done lately? He did a Napoleon movie, right? Did you see yeah, that, Mahler? Everyone loved that. That did well. Yeah. Like, it, it, that movie, at least, the, you can look at it and be like, okay, Apple paid $200 million for this, and they were like, you know what? We can't make money on these things just on our streaming service. Fuck it. Let's just release it in theaters as well. Mm -hmm. Make any money we can off that, and, like, pray for the best. So at least that movie, like, was never meant to be released in theaters and make money, I guess. You can, like, look at it from that perspective, but yeah, it certainly didn't get um, a bunch of praise. Waller, do you think the reason Thrawn is an idiot is because he's gay? Much like we'll know ultra homosexual Tywin Lannister. Much love. It's a reference to a very old E5 episode where someone said that Tywin was the apex homosexual in Game of Thrones. Hmm. Um, 
I mean, the powers of gay can give you access to great wisdom or great retardation. You never know. So Thrawn, I guess he rolled the dice and he got unlucky. Corn beef hash. What's up, man? Almost two years. Thank you. What's up, Michael? What's up, Stargrift? I love the dynamic you three have. Theory never changed. Ryan and Welshy <laughs> working <laughs> on him. Oh, and Mahler, you gay. That's fair. You can't say theory never changed and then say Ryan and Mahler keep working on him. <laughs> that would be that would be <laughs> that would be implying we're trying to get him to change. Well, I love when people are always like, "Oh, uh, they're gonna change him and stuff." It's like, bro, I already have my opinions. I've had my opinion. Like, I already think Disney Star Wars is fucked. Like, I think it's horrible. But what I'm trying to do in my channel is, is it's me just trying to essentially look at, okay, well, here's the problem. How do we fix this shit? How would I go in and do that? I mean, I have like 10 million fan fictions on my channel. So I like to take stories and kind of examine, you know, what could we change that would make it really cool or different? And that's essentially what I do with all of the Disney stuff that we come, that we get released. So unless it's really good, like Tales or um, Mando. So... Yeah, it's not like I'm sitting here like, this is amazing. Like, no, I mean, like, Qui-Gon should not have shown up in Obi-Wan. Um, no one should know that Luke is Anakin's kid. No one should know where he is. Uh, Reva shouldn't have survived. Like, I make those very, very vocalized. But at the same time, sometimes they do catch me on, like, heartstrings and stuff. So it's like, you know, um, it's like this battle between me as like a Star Wars fan as like a little kid that was very, it was very important to me and then there's like the me which is more logical I'm like oh you're bastardizing something that I really cared about so and then while trying to find like a, a way out of this corner so it's um welcome to the channel it's interesting interesting how I navigate sorry um, did you read EU Trilogy of Star Crusher? The Sun Crusher, yeah, that was in the Jedi Apprentice trilogy. Um, Sun Crusher was a super well weapon that was developed by a, again a team whose like sole thing was to develop even more super weapons for the Emperor. And it was a prototype that um it was a torpedo that you could fire at a sun to make it go supernova. So instead of just destroying one planet, you destroying an entire fucking star system. And uh it was used by Kip Duran. Destroy the planet of Karita and its sun. Not a massive fan of the Jedi Apprentice trilogy, but they're kind of important. I have not seen that. Prism stories, what if? You get alter, delete, rewrite one scene from each of the sequel movies. Which scenes are you picking and why? Assume these are compound so they carry forward to the next movie arc, next movie, etc. Uh... I delete everything, bro. I, I ain't playing that game. <laughs> Just delete it all. Delete all the death scenes. <laughs> like, yeah. And then, yeah. then fix it. Delete all, delete all the death. So if I could change one thing, um, it's that Finn. If I could change one thing in all of Star Wars, it would be that Finn dies in that fucking Tie Fighter. Like that when that Tie Fighter goes down, that both Finn and Poe die, which should mean the rest of the fucking movie never happens. Mm -hmm. There you go. Wait, how does it not happen? Like, I, I, if Finn doesn't fucking all of a sudden, like, oh, happen right. upon Rey and, like, need help escape, like, yeah, yeah. Dumb yeah. bitch stays on Jakku forever. Dave Filoni wants Gina to snap his saber in half. All right. Watching to see if a joke super chat was read. Nope, close to Discord where you get shamed and run out for little. Alas, I shall just remain a watcher. What? Don't know. We read it all. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. You guys should watch Star Wars the Grey Fan film trailer. Would guys like Jedi game in the same format as Hogwarts Legacy but at the temple? No, nah, what I'd like is uh, Helldivers 2 but Star Wars. <laughs> I'd be humble with that. That'd be amazing. Thanks, Sand. Remember for two years. Stargrift is the only thing that brings me joy to life. Thanks for the great podcast, guys. Love the banter. Hey, we love it too. Love to hear it. I'm sorry love that it. your life is that bad. I feel like I've got a it's it's a boogie quote they're making fun of. Like, <laughs> they have many joys in life. Okay, that's just one of them. There you go. Love the Bane trilogy, but only liked Heir of the Empire because it was written before the prequels. No prequel vibe and lore. How do you reconcile the lore? Thoughts? 
Yeah, so there there are obviously some differences in um <clears throat> Heir to the Empire because it that the really the only big difference is that George told people that there was a bigger gap between Clone Wars and the OT than there ended up being when he ended up deciding to change a little bit for the actual prequels. So a lot of the references and things like that are described as being a little bit older. Um they there's a different name for the cloning um tech they use which never really comes up in Camino tech but i don't know it, it's pretty minimal to me and i think if you understand the the context and that george's instructions changed like they sometimes do you know i don't i i think that most people even when they read it now for the first time it doesn't affect them too much these more masks than dave floney or gina mm. force facial each of your top three lightsaber hilts, uh, Palpatine, Anakin. I, I love Obi Wan's. Malgus is dope as shit. So is Revan's. I go Vader, Obi Wan, and uh, Dooku. I think Obi Wan's is badass. Um, I don't think there's quite anything that can top Maul, um, just from the perspective of being in a theater when that happened when we saw that happen you know what i mean fucking igniting that other side was fucking wild um and so like maul's lightsaber he'll always stands out to me palpy good f your excitement gives you focus mm. force them to read the thrawn trilogy already mauler can't read but mm. there is a great audiobook out there let's try this love the show i have no opinions all right. Thank you. All Thanks, right. Man. Recently watched Nerdonymous videos about the sequels, and I would highly recommend them. He delves into the JJ being a bigger problem than people realize, and not just Ryan J. Super detailed sources. I, yep. Mahler, I've been telling you to watch those forever, man. What do you mean? Fucking. Wait. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, those are the ones I recommended you guys check out. <laughs> He's been telling us about that for a month. Yeah. Thank you, Lindy. Thanks, Cody. Theory, why skip the naughty chats? Those are the fun ones. Uh, sometimes they're too naughty, man. YouTube's got guidelines, especially if the image is like a naked person. To be fair, half of them, he doesn't understand they're naughty till he's halfway through, so you guys still get those. Yeah, literally. I'm pretty sure I read all of them, man. Theory, do you like Troy Denning's Star Wars novels? Who's Troy Denning again? He's an author. I um, I I really like a lot of Troy Denning stuff. Oh shit! Old school. Yes. Oh, yeah. School. Stuff that I like. But he did that. He did Fate of the Jedi. He did three books in Fate of the Jedi. Oh, so Fate of the Jedi was done by uh, a team of three authors. So was um. Uh, Legacy of the Force, which was right before that as well. I think Denning did the Swarm War books, which are not my favorites, um, but they're all right. He also wrote some of the best stuff in NJO, like Star by Star, which is probably one of my favorite Star Wars books of all time. Star by Star takes place about halfway through the Yuzong Vong War in the New Jedi Order. Very cool. Mahler, please make an April Fool's review video. <laughs> the Clone Wars episode bomb that <laughs> So, I'll give you so much money. What's funny is I would have seen that one, and <laughs> I'm now looking at. So, for anyone who doesn't know, right? Anyone out there who's like, "Wait, Bombad Jedi"? That sounds amazing. So, mm. on a diplomatic mission to the planet Rodia, Padme discovers that her old friend and fellow Republic senator Onaconda Far has allied with the planet with the Separatists. In exchange for food and resources for his people, Onaconda captures Padme and promises to deliver her to Newt Gunray. Sensing Padme is in trouble, Jar Jar Binks disguises himself as a Jedi and with the help of C-3PO courageously fights to rescue his friend and fellow senator. It does sound pretty top tier. That description hey, hey, sounds hey, way less goofy scary. than the actual fucking <laughs> episode is. Isn't that what any, episode with with? Jar, any episode with Jar Jar is like fucking... It's either like the best thing or the worst thing depending yeah. on how you like think of it. Yeah, I agree. Hope you have a nice night having it with you. Right on, Phantom. Hey, we thank you guys for watching with us, man. We love you guys. Uh, what's up, Jess? Please. 
That's Michael. That's gay actor gay Michael Mike, Douglas. Gay actor Michael Douglas. I'm sad that the planet Ord Mantell and the character IG88 aren't Battlefront 2. Maybe they'll be added as a deal <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> what if Elon Musk bought Star Wars and decanonized everything Disney made and just made one Jar Jar movie and that was it? Um, That'd be I'd preferable laugh. to what we have now. Yeah, the greatest movie ever, yeah. Yeah. You think he's gonna buy it? No. No. I'm finna live forever. No saber can kill this queen. Ah, oh, fuck! <laughs> How did you read that, man? <laughs> the fact that he read it the way he did <laughs> without seeing Darth Shanique. Right, are we like are you I read this shit before KFC I read it out. You know what I mean? Like we super chats. I tend to read them and then read them out. You know what I mean? I I always <laughs> read like I read the name and then I read their chat. Um I like the way Theory does it though. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your service, Ryan. Love you guys. Love the show. Best part of my weeks lately. Thank you, Foster. It's the same as every other clone. I don't. <laughs> yeah, this is the my Laku. Uh, so good, a pretty face. Even I know what that means. Right. Um, want to see more games like Lucasfilm used to produce back in the day? I know a lot of those games weren't the best, but they sure did fuel my. Okay, hey, chat, calm down. Let's not get racist, man. I didn't see the. I didn't see the name. All right. I didn't see. The I didn't bucket of KFC. I don't. I just we. Oh, I just okay. go boom, 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 and then I just. I don't. And then. <clears throat> I know that a lot of those games weren't the best, but they sure did fuel my fandom as a kid and enriched my experience. I, I agree. Uh, I think that th that was like the heyday when they saw a popular type of game whether it was like oh first person shooter or uh real-time strategy game or rpg or whatever and they're like hey let's do this with star wars let's come up with a cool story we can make something work and we'll, we'll put out a bunch of stuff we'll work with a bunch of different companies we'll put out a lot of games mm -hmm. and, and a couple bad ones but you also had some of the best fucking games that were ever made like in that era so i i, I totally agree can anyone please tell me how Kathleen Kennedy is still in charge? She did some good things, but most of her decisions hurt Star Wars. I, well, I hear she she's out it. any day now. All right. Yeah. It's true. You know. Okay, who, who told you that one? Rufus. Little birdie. We need a live action Clone Wars trilogy. Thoughts? We've had yes. seven seasons of Clone Wars. Yeah, but um, live action? With Hayden and... Um... The actress, I don't know her name. Ariana Greenblatt. Ariana Greenblatt is her yeah. name. Yeah, yeah um, she did great. I thought she was better than Rosaria Dawson as Ahsoka. Yeah, um, which is low bar, but I, I, I personally don't think that's something we need. Is I, I don't think we need live action um, Clone Wars when you have seven seasons of Clone Wars. It's already too much to fit in that time era anyway. Um, personally. Like Clone Wars takes place over what <clears throat> eighteen months? And the KK that forced Palpy and probably bro. Question for all three: speech monologue from Andor show, huh? Do you like it? Oh, is that what he's saying? I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Andor was the best produced Star Wars show to date. Easily. Sadly. I feel like Kenobi should have had the most production value. Are they asking, like, what our favorite speech is? Like, mm. did we like Skarsgård's speech? Did Probably we like Luthen, the speech yeah. at the end? Like, yeah, I, Luthen's speech I, I don't know exactly if that is what the question is, but I like Luthen personally. I think he's the best part of the show. Yeah, what was the one he said that was really dope at the end? Well, his speech uh, is all about like how much he's destroyed. He had to destroy himself to be able to give the rebellion a chance, right? Yeah, that was it was, it was good. Mm -hmm. I thought Marva's speech was a little. No, no, I care about that. Questions oh. for all three. What's the best? No, oh, I see. I see. I I like your profile picture. Theory is truly one of the creators of all time. 
That's, that's, high, pra that's high praise. You're truly one of the creators of all time. Thank you, sir. Not whether you like Andor or not. I meant Andor is objectively high quality. Yeah, I don't disagree. We don't like sequels like you said. I'd say Andor fans love the prequels and OT the most and hate the sequels. All the best and join. Would you? And they love cheese and wine. Um, I don't know. I, I haven't looked into like the Andor fan base to see what they typically enjoy. Like if there's an Andor subreddit or an Andor forum that they talk about stuff, but mm. I mean, I don't know. At, not a ton of people watched it, you know, and it's a, when yeah. it initially came out. Um, just, I mean, right around, just slightly less than watched Ahsoka when it came out, I guess. Um, I, I don't really know what the Andor fan base looks like because I, I think that that one, there are fan bases. We, we look at them, we're like, hey, look, this says this on Twitter or whatever. We can like see where they're at. But I think for some things, if the audience tends to skew a little bit older, you don't often see that because they're not sitting there tweeting about every episode oh, or watching yeah. every, you know, they're not watching right when it comes out, but there's still a big audience for it. Kind of like the Reacher audience on yeah. Amazon. I think the Reacher audience tends to skew a little bit older. You don't see all the social media interaction, but it's dominating ratings wise. So it's got a big audience. They just mm -hmm. might not be active on a social media site. Yeah, I agree with that. It's usually the ones that are most vocal or the minority, like Hayden said. Sometimes. It is cool that when you review Andor positively, like you just get sent wine. It's fucking crazy. It's really cheese. cost effective too. Yeah, cheese, cheese comes like you get you get a tap installed for the cheese. Yeah, depends on what cheese though. Melting. You can kind of choose. Depends on how much Reef. you show for it. You get like <laughs> special selections. Mm -hmm. With the top tier one being, I don't know what. Blue, blue like cheese? my favorite Marvel actress. You you better hold on to that Marvel's appearance. She might never come back. Might be the last I, one. I made a video about it today. Is she not? She looked good in that dress at the SAG Awards. So, um, can you go back to that super chat from Mikey? You didn't answer him. Um, what's it like bench pressing Lizzo? Uh, my bench is pretty weak actually, and I, I think I bench three ten. It's the most I bench on a good day. I don't know what Lizzo weighs. I bet she thing. smells. Who knows? It smells like royalty. Hey, Theory, are there any Dark Horse Clone Wars characters that you wish showed up in the Filoni version? I wish we saw Dirge, Sor, Sor Bulk, and Tol, Tol Score. Mm. Sora would be cool. Um, I, 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 I want I, to I, see Tulak Horde. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think that the the Dark Horse Clone Wars comics and everything, I think those are really well done. And I yeah. think there was there was such a fucking tight timeline. Like before TCW, this is one of the things I really like. Before TCW, you could like you knew who was where, like who was on what planet in what sector. There was like a week by week, month by month breakdown of the Clone Wars. Um, and it all really made sense and worked together. Um uh, and then Clone Wars happen. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Dirge would have been cool. Waller, can you do a Liverpool Scouse accent? Um, uh, they're like you know, Liverpool. Like the they'll that that uh, the lad who came on fucking open bar uh, Reaper. I think he's from Liverpool. It would take me a while to be able to do it properly. It's um, it's a really specific kind of accent. What's Cockney? Uh, poor people. <laughs> poor English. <laughs> you put it that way. So, like, what's the one Tom Hardy did in the uh, the movie where he has a twin brother? I don't think I saw that movie. Venom. <laughs> you said that before. <laughs> You're fucking weird. <laughs> it must have been funny then if I wanted to say it again. Yeah, <laughs> we must have had this exact conversation before. <laughs> hmm. Oh God, I'm late. Gi and a spa. I don't know if I can use any words now. More money for you, chaps. Thank you, Bo or Bonzo. I almost said Thank Bozo. You, Bonzo. Thank you, Bonzo. <laughs> 
Theory been a while since. Congrats on your Saber site. Tons of support from Australia, and I really hope to see you and beat you in Battlefront 2. I keep dreaming, baby. You guys don't know how long I've been playing JK2, man. It's basically the same, same sort of schematic. But we're on controller, so you might have the upper hand. You guys recommend Fallen Order and Survivor? I do, yeah. Fallen Order, for sure. Um, for sure. I don't hate them. Uh, Souls Light with Star Wars. If Disney were to come out and say any fan film made during 24 can be monetized and they would not challenge it, except porn, do you think this could save Star Wars and bring us some good content? I don't think it would make a difference. Whether it's monetized or not. I mean, people people who make... The reason fan films are so great is because you can't make money from them. Yeah. Well, mind you, I see a lot of people still monetizing them and Disney doesn't say shit unless it's my stuff. But... I think one of the reasons they're so great is because it's not coming from, from a place of, ooh, what can I do to make money? It's coming from a place of like, I love this. I'm going to put money into this yeah, to not make any money and just because I love it. That's it. That's why they're cool. Ryan's thoughts on race swapping Ron and all the Weasleys to Mexican and you playing Lucius Malfoy in the reboot. Uh, one, I hope they don't race swap any of the characters. Um, but if they do... I want them to go all out at like if they do race swap the characters. Yes, I want you to go all the way. Make the Weasleys the poorest family in the world black. Do it. All right. I fucking dare you. Please don't race swap any characters in the Harry Potter reboot. I would love to play Lucius Malfoy, though. Let me do it. I'll dye my hair for it. I'll wear a wig. I don't care what I have to do. I'd love to play Lucius. That'd be amazing. Favorite Star Wars novel and comic? Filthy little mud blood. Um, Plagueis, and then um... I like Legacy. I like the Legacy comics. Um, that's probably my favorite, like comic book experience. It's the Ghost Legacy prison. run. Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison. Ah, my favorite Star Wars novel. Uh, I mentioned it. We'll say Star by Star. I kind of change it every so often, but I'll say Star by Star. We need another race of aliens in Helldivers too. Maybe something that resembles. Yeah, we do, man. Just the freaking automatons and the bugs don't really... We need more. What kind of cheese and wine do you like? Uh, Molly? I don't drink wine like ever. And then cheese. Um, favorite cheese. Probably cheddar. Hmm. I actually have like a bunch of cheese. Like little like that I... I like cheese in my fridge right now that I'll snack on. I usually have it with bourbon though, not wine. I don't know what that hmm. says about me. I like brie. I like Brie Larson. Cheese. Well, she's good looking. Mm hmm. And she liked my tweet. Did she? Yeah, a long time ago. Really? really? Bench press Brie Larson. I, I could bench press Brie Larson. Um, but uh, I don't think she weighs very much. That's so not very impressive. Um, yeah, it was like, it was some like Fortnite thing. Her, her, she had a character in Fortnite, and I won. Like, I played with her character. I won. I like, took a screenshot. I'm like, just won my match and this with this character. Thanks, Brie. And I didn't even tag her or anything like that. And she liked the tweet. Hmm. And I didn't even say anything about it. But a bunch of people had a fucking meltdown because they could see that she liked my tweet. Oh. And they're like, they started tagging her. They're like, you don't know who this is. You shouldn't be liking this tweet. You need to unlike this tweet. You don't understand. Oh, it, was fuck fucking, it was fucking really funny. Oh, and God. so that I made a video about how Brie Larson's under attack because she tried to associate with me. <laughs> yeah, she, would she be so funny to associate she, like, with you by liking a tweet. Imagine she like came to your house and recorded a video with you to be like, I really like the tweet. What can I say? I, just, yeah, I want to stand hilarious. by Ryan's tweet. Dude, I've said it before. Would... Like, I, I think that Brie got a, she got a fucking a lot of heat for a couple of things she said. I, I don't think she's said anything like really worth being too critical of in the past like five fucking years. Like, oh yeah, dude, she learned quickly, I think, but it took a while for everyone to realize that. I agree, and so uh, like, I didn't even have a YouTube channel when Captain Marvel came out, um, and I certainly think the the product is very worthy of criticism. But in yeah. terms of her, uh, like, I'm sure we don't agree politically, but I really have no problem with Brie Larson. You didn't have a YouTube channel when Captain Marvel came out, wasn't that like three years ago? That was in 2019. 2019, yeah. It came out in April of 2019. Oh, shit, you, you didn't have a YouTube channel then. No. Oh, dude, you're doing amazing. I started my YouTube channel in uh, like August or oh, September or something of 2019. Yeah. But you've been on YouTube though, because you were with Jeremy. 
No, that's when that was like I started my YouTube channel the same day I started working for Jeremy. I had never done oh. a YouTube thing in my life before I started working with geeks and gamers. Fucking right on, man. Jeremy's because Jeremy's like retarded. So he met me in a bar and was like, hey, you seem like you know what you're talking about, about Star Wars. If you ever want to start a YouTube channel, let me know. And I'm like, OK, so I did. And <laughs> that's how it happened, really? <laughs> yes. Fuck? So it was. Yeah. So I guess it's been a while since I've told this story, but. I was in San Diego, Gary and Jeremy, Gary from Nerdrotic and Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers were in San Diego for San Diego Comic-Con. This is before their channels were really that big or whatever. And um, they did a little meetup at a bar. There was like seven people there. I was one of the people that showed up. I was watching the channel. I was in the Navy at the time. I had no plans on starting a YouTube channel. Yeah. And I was just talking to them about shit and, you know, with sports, uh dc star wars i was bitching about clone wars even back then i started arguing with jeremy about the character of ahsoka like in the middle of this bar in san diego um and separately about 10 minutes apart gary came up and he was like hey you really like know your shit you should think about starting a youtube channel i was like well, that's cool i had never thought about that and then yeah. jeremy 10 minutes later not knowing that gary had said that came up and said the same thing with the caveat if you ever do i want to work with you and i was like mm. okay that's wild. So uh, I took like a couple days to think about it. And I was like, yeah, i give it a shot. And here we are. Dude, this is awesome. I never knew. So you guys just randomly met in a bar. Well, I went there because they were there for Comic-Con. They said, hey, we're going to be here for a while. It was a little meetup. But back so you, then, so this is like before a, the meetups like were hundreds of people. Yeah, I was a fan. This is before Holy the meetups shit. were hundreds of people. This is when the meetups were like seven people. Wow. You know? Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. yeah, so they're my internet dads, my gay internet dads. Yeah, that's really Aww. that's a that's a cool origin story. I like that. Yeah, and then it, and it. then I made a Batman review and it all went downhill. Yeah. Uh, so you guys need to play Von Rum's Battlefront Two mods and take away the sequels and replaces them with EU content. Sweet. Bro, I love that profile picture. It's not a racist one. Uh, <laughs> love it it's not racist. Don't worry. Yeah. I don't get it. Like, you don't like, get it. It's like God. It's like Jesus. God. Well, yeah, this is like a flooded again. <laughs> what does it mean? Like take another hit? No. Like destroy the fucking world, kill everybody. Oh, flood. Oh, Those are flood. Dude, Noah. Oh my God, Jesus. It's all right. Mahler, what do you think of the cereal? Cereal. <laughs> cereal Top tier. Cereal. They tell you everything you need to know about not only cereal but also cereal. Ryan, I bet she smells. Talking about Lizzo, not Brie. Brie probably smells amazing. Yeah, she looks like she smells awesome. Yeah. She looks like she smells really good. Can't probably wait. It probably tastes good. <laughs> I was waiting for him to say the camera. Over. What? That's like, what is that? Like, that's me appreciating women, right? I remember that FNT episode where you were like desperately trying to argue she is the way she looked in like a some kind of her bra like, me. Yeah. yeah everyone was like trying to argue his push up or whatever and you were like no damn it well, no i was like yeah obviously it's a bra like it's doing what bras do to women but it's like and then do you see, yeah and then like the do you see the picture of her from the fan what is it the freaking fast and furious premiere it's like come on you can't tell me she's not well endowed for someone of her build she looks really good i'm respecting women right now oh, dude yeah she, i think she's i think she's super attractive it would be misogynistic for me not to say oh, I want to dude, go down there was on like, her. There was like an e <laughs> It would be. <laughs> Come on. What are we doing here? Anyway, oh look, can't wait to hear Mola try a Welsh accent. Well, Welsh accents are easy for me because that's where I'm from. So I can do them all the time, like, it's totally slip in and out, like, but it's the other ones I have trouble with. I don't even know what my accent's called anymore. Yeah, what would it be? It's, it's custom at this I point. I call it the Mahler. Genuinely, I've spoken to Americans for too long, and too much stuff has come into my accent now, so that if I speak to someone from Wales, they're like, eh? <laughs> Though, I'm assuming you guys are the same. If I speak to someone who's like super Welsh, then my Welsh gets like accentuated and comes out more. Yeah, if you spend time with somebody that has a particular <clears throat> inflection, you tend to pick up some of their stuff, yeah. Theory give Ryan and Mahler lightsabers to do a live unpaid review. Would just love to see you three 
to wielding laser swords. Uh, yeah, oh, I, well, I'm going to send both of them sabers. Probably in about a, less than a month. Oh, yeah. Once the full site's up, I want them to go through and be like, um, I want that one. Mm. Okay, all right. Hell yeah. And then we're also going to do tons of giveaways during live streams. We're going to do, there's going to be discount codes that you can just enter in at checkout. So I'll just like give select few you some members, uh, depending on your tier, give you guys percentages off your whole order. Uh, there's a lot of really intricate stuff coming in. So um, we're going to do contests, giveaways, raffles, a lot of fun stuff coming. Keeping a hush hush for now until uh, all is revealed. Uh, that tastes like bat cheese. All right. That is your favorite cheese, Mahler. Also, <laughs> the streams be a vibe. It, these streams get longer and longer. I remember when I started this with Mahler, he's like, I really can't go over two hours. Yeah, now we like, double. We just did two shows in one week. <laughs> yeah, we should try to limit them a little more. How do we do two shows in one week? What I mean is, <laughs> like last in week? The, yeah, he means these last two have been four hours, basically. They made Cyril's mom a stereotypical Jewish mom. Did they? I don't know. Was she Jewish? She's just like overbearing. Like, like overly doting, maybe. I am not Jewish, so I don't really know what a Jewish mom would be like. But well, um, accent is Mosh. Mosh. Sure. I was driving when you mentioned this, but why would you debate a grown man named Destiny? <laughs> uh, Destiny is a girl's name. He is true. And you know what? He's the debate lord. So if you defeat him in the marketplace of ideas, then we can prove definitively that the prequels are better than the sequels. So, uh, right. you know, what's better than that? Would you guys be cool with a Star Wars story based on the Republic Intelligence Corps with Shadow Company at the helm tr tackling behind the scenes dilemmas with expensive clone armor and stealth ops? Um, uh, I don't know about the expensive clone armor part, but um, I am I, I am open to delving into a lot of different realms of Star Wars they haven't necessarily seen. Like, even though I, I don't like Andor as, like, I don't like the carrier, character of Cassian Andor, right? Mm. I don't like Diego Luna. I don't like Cassian Andor. I don't like his particular story. However, the idea of more shit like that is what I do like. I do think that's what Star Wars needs to do more of. Not everything has to tie in to the five best characters in all of Star Wars, and the most important characters. Not everything has to tie back to the Force. Not everything has to be super, like, I'm doing this decision to save the galaxy. You know? Yeah. I like that. <laughs> right. That's a good face. Yeah. Waller could do a Welsh accent without vowels. Like how they no added vowels. the star-gripped logo there. How Where? do you do words without vowels? <laughs> Where? Isn't that just like Russian? Oh, yeah, he added it, right. What if Disney made a special edition of the sequel trilogy taking out Luke thinking of killing Ben Solo and adding Anakin near the end of Rise of Skywalker? I, I don't... I, <laughs> oh, it's how does that dark. fix it's Force Awakens? Shit, uh, it <laughs> it's like... How does it fix the entire state of the galaxy? Um, how do, yeah, it's a drop in the bucket in terms of like... <laughs> the repairs that need to be made. Mm -mm. How does that like fix there. Luke deciding to go away? Period. Yeah, I... fix Luke not dying. Fix Luke not using the Force. Fix Luke Han and Leia getting together. Um, and fix your overall plot. Fix Ray not everything. having any training. It's just everything. And bring them all back. I've never agreed with Ryan Moore. I'm Maybe. scared to know what that was about, Kinsley. Probably Brie Larson. Probably Brie Larson. Yeah. Well, that wraps up the stream for here tonight. Uh, we appreciate you. We're about four hours in, just about. If y'all can leave a big fat like on the stream. There's your double show. We two sure episodes. appreciate it. Yeah, two episodes right there. Got two episodes last week. And uh, we appreciate you. So make sure you check out theorysabers.com. Full site coming in a month. And uh, check out these good here fellas right below me and uh, tier to my right, my left. Beautiful. I get confused. <laughs> <laughs> you guys say, hold up your hands, whichever one has the L, but uh, damn it if I can't read. So, <laughs> kind of shit out of luck. What if I'm standing in front of a mirror? It gets all confusing. 
gets all kebobbled and discombobulated. I don't know how it goes, but uh, yeah. Y'all take care now. We'll, we'll see y'all next week for the next episode of The Bad Bitch. Bad Bitch. <laughs> bad <laughs> Bitch. That Bad Bitch. Oh, yeah. All right. I'd rather watch a show called The Bad Bitch. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. Just saying. I can see myself, my old eyes above me. <laughs> <I was just saying. laughs> it's, it's really creepy, man. I don't know. Uh, yeah, thanks to whoever made it, though. That's very nice of you, but. Thank you for making me look as miserable as I feel. I love it. This is so creepy, man. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.